Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. Well, it's the night after, or the day, the day after the night before, AJ, or as I call him on this channel, Hercules strikes again. Um, a controversial stoppage, well, not even controversial, a shocking and disgusting stoppage of Carlos Taco, a man that should have gone 12 rounds and should have been allowed to continue fighting. But if you want to hear more about my thoughts on that, I was joined last night by um, Chris um, Mason, who's from the world of darts. You see him on ITV and the world of boxing. And I was joined last night also by Bo Brand with Truth and Facts Boxing. Um, that was that's been on YouTube. So we got into a real long debate last night. It was almost three hours long. It was a good debate. We had some good viewership from it. Some good questions brought in. Some good thoughts and some good um, views. That was fantastic. So a real great night. So check that out when you get a chance. It's about three hours long. So I suggest you either watch it in parts or uh, when you've got nothing really to do, just sit back and listen to it. It's um, very interesting. Okay. So this video is entitled what is next for aj you know at this point in time the matter of who he fights next we all know now it doesn't really matter he can fight joe bloggs he's got that sort of a a following now i want to break this down into two points only three points point number one we're best served in terms of what how to predict the future if we look into history history serves us best if we research it now we know the British media, they do the same thing over and over and over and over again, and it won't change. Britain's most loved sportsman. Remember Frank Bruno? Remember how Bruno could never do anything wrong? And then look what happened later in his career. You know, the stuff that the, the, the newspapers reported about his mental health condition and how he'd been treated. Remember Frank Bruno? You would have thought, you know, he would have had loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of money. Stories report that he isn't, hasn't got as much money as people would probably have thought. And you remember back in Bruno's time, there was no such thing about becoming a self-promoter. Not since the times of Audi Harrison, when Audi decided to self-promote, did we have that in this country. And so therefore, Bruno had a promoter and a manager throughout his career. So how much money Bruno made in his career you can be guaranteed he was ripped off in the sense that his earning potential could have been even more so. And don't think that because Joshua was with Eddie Hearn that he's somehow immune to um, the media because he's not. If you remember, not too long ago, as Joshua was on his rise, um, they brought they talked about him and his child and 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 you know his personal life and they brought that out in the media you remember that story and they kind of quickly hushed that all up because it didn't look good for his pr um i, I in the, it's you know it's very easy to cover up somebody um and somebody else somebody else's past or their present if they are bringing in lots of money it's easy to do within media you talk to the right person you have a good relationship with the editor and you can spin the story whichever way you want it to be for now joshua is the golden boy he's the golden goose and he can do no wrong even if he is doing wrong he can do no wrong but that stuff will be used against him if he doesn't toe the line we don't have to go very far into the past to see how a man that can do no wrong david beckham the savior of english football remember him and he went to the world cup and what happened this is david beckham whiter than snow david beckham remember that and the infamous situation that was either the euros or the world cup where he got sent off before he went to the world cup wow beckham you couldn't stop seeing things about beckham a real pr machine david beckham he, he didn't have the greatest personality but he had one good foot on him and he scored loads of goals from free kicks there were a lot of players better than beckham but beckham had in their eyes star quality anyway 
Beckham goes to the World Cup. You know, he's the best thing since last spread, the best player in the world. Well, all sorts of stuff is said, which we all know is not true. Media hype. Goes to the World Cup. Gets sent off. Comes back to the UK. And then we see the true nature of the loving British public. They sending him death threats to his family and all the rest of it. Well, Tyson Fury never even got the opportunity to even get being celebrated. Um, for, for, you know, obviously, he, I have always said, it's a bit of a PR disaster. Um, some of the things he should have said, maybe kept to, kept to himself and not really sit those things out. He may have avoided some of the situations, but some of the situations, I believe, with Tyson would have been um, difficult for him anyway because of his background. I'm not condoning the thought process, but it is what it is. So my point is, if it could happen to David Beckham, then Beckham came back, scored that goal against Greece, and then the country loved him all over again. Look, there's some things we need to look at. And if you look at history serving as best, age, um, Audrey Harrison, Olympic gold medalist, never won a World Heavyweight Championship, self-promoted. Ricky Hatton, self-promoted. Lennox Lewis, line promotions, self-promoted. I'm sure there are other names that I can't strike off the top of my head that people went and Joe Kazaki, end of his career, leaving Warren, did it his way. I'm sure there are other names, but if you think of all those names I just mentioned there, none of them, none of them are making the sort of money that Anthony Joshua's making. So I ask boxing fans, why does Anthony Joshua have to stay with his promoter? I mean, last night is a perfect example of all the reasons why maybe it's time for him to go his own way. Last night's stoppage was a BS stoppage. I'm not going to go on about that. But what I am going to go about on about is the people that are in control of making decisions in his career, the people that are in beh behind the decisions for that stoppage, the people that are behind the promotion of, of AJ, the people that are sending out and putting these silly tweets out that are saying, is AJ the greatest heavyweight in, the, in, in Britain or would he beat? Lennox Lewis, or he would destroy Lennox Lewis. What we're doing here now is turning one potentially great heavyweight against a proven heavyweight. Great heavyweight. I can see that happening right now. That's what's happening. Why? I don't know. They may say, well, you know, Lennox isn't a true Brit. You know, he fought for Canada in the Olympics. But hey, when you won the Undisputed Championship of the World, he was considered a Brit, and I'll have no more said of it. The point is this. There is no reason why AJ now could not go ahead and be continue going with AJ Boxing or Joshua Promotions. He could do it. He can talk to a crowd. You've seen him talk to the crowd. He's actually having a conversation with the crowd now. Now, you tell me the difference between him having a conversation as a, in the crowd, with the crowd as a boxer and not just preparing himself as a promoter. You tell me the difference. Who should I fight next? Well, he doesn't need any hurt to say who should he fight next. He could do that. He's talking to the crowd. He's building a relationship by himself with the crowd for the future. That's what I'm thinking. Also, notice how last night when the crowd, he was able to control the crowd, control the masses. Put his promoter on this on you know last night on the spot got the crowd to boo his promoter well we all see that could be tongue and cheek and ah you're looking into things are things as smooth and as rosy as they should be how much time has joshua got left on the contract and why is he stalling on this whole thing with deontay wilder and talking like he wants to manage his career let me explain something to you now AJ may have a name for himself in the UK, but that US crossover hasn't happened yet. And who best would you go to in the US for that crossover? There's one man's name that stands out above all the other names at the moment. And that is Mr. Al Heyman. Joshua has the potential. 
if guided right, if fighting certain opponents, to be on the same earning power as a Floyd Mayweather because he's a heavyweight. If he makes the right moves, could you imagine Anthony Joshua moving over to America or having an American promoter in Al Heyman and Leonard Ellaby beside him? Joshua's been in America a few times. He's met with Floyd, we know. He sees how Floyd's career is. Joshua's not dumb. He's seen how Floyd's career is. He's seen how it's managed. And the love he'll probably get in America is going to be a different love than what he gets in the UK. Another thing to mention. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but if you notice, every time Joshua can get the opportunity, he talks about Nigeria. Is it possible that in the future, Joshua is going to take boxing to Nigeria? That he's going to take his world status and box in Africa? Is it possible he could stage a fight in Nigeria? Then why would he stage a fight in Nigeria? Why not? If it was good enough for Ali and, and um, Foreman, or Ali and Fraser, if, it, if, it's, if, it, if it's good enough for them, why is it not good enough for Anthony Joshua? This guy's got a global status. So if he was to self-promote, he could go his own way. But if you wanted to have a real good team around him, what better team than to have Leonard Ellaby and Al Heyman? So Joshua may say to himself, you know what? I'm not quite ready to promote myself. Let me go down the route of having an LB and a Heyman next to me. What would happen then? Then possibly the possibility of a, a wilder Joshua fight can be managed better. Just a thought. I want to hear what you boxing fans thought, but one fight to go. If I were looking at what happened last night, I'd be thinking to myself, it doesn't matter what the fans think. And truthfully, boxing fans, it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you moan about. It doesn't matter what you complain about. Until you start seeing changes in boxing, i.e. five judges, um, proper independent scoring, um, fights that are scored properly, and the BS stoppages are removed and, and judges and referees are being held accountable for their actions, there's going to be no change. Pay-per-views are not being monitored. And there isn't a, a, a kite standard for what constitute as a quality pay-per-view and what qualifies as a rip-off. There has to be some value and there has to be some sort of trading standards to say, hey, this is pay-per-view worthy. This is crap. There needs to be some process in that. It doesn't matter what you think. Believe it, you the boxing fan, I the boxing fan, it don't matter what we think. Yes, we can go to presses. Yes, we can film videos. Yes, we can do interviews. But if there was going to be real change, it would have happened already. The only time there will be real change is when boxing fans decide, I'm not paying for that anymore. When boxing fans say, I'm not going to support that event no more. When boxing fans say, you know what, you're ripping me off here, son. I'm not having it anymore. That's when there'll be real change. But again, the tack and fight, a man who should have gone 12 rounds at the very least, or had the opportunity to go to 12 rounds, has been stopped. Again, because he's not your favorite fighter, because you don't have any real connection with that fighter, you don't really care. But wait until it happens to one of your favorite fighters, and then. You'll understand what those people who are closest to Takam felt last night. It's very easy to turn a blind eye when it doesn't directly affect you. But when it affects you, we all seem to want to jump up and down about it. So I think there's no reason why Joshua needs to stay with Eddie Hearn. None. 
None. You know, he's at a he's at a stage and at a platform now. We could leap from that platform and go to almost. You know, he's he could go to just another level altogether. This is where it's to do with marketing and promoting, and you know, you see where Joshua is at the moment. If you, if, if you're if you're in the UK, you'll understand how almost for me revolting it is. I'm great to I'm I'm so happy for him in a sense that he's you know Westfield, he's the face on Westfield, he's the face on Lynx, he's the face on Water, a uh, water company. So I'm 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 happy to see a fellow brother doing well for himself. There's no hating on that. In fact, I want to see him do even further more. But for him to go even further, two things have to happen. First thing, he needs to fight better opposition. And second thing, the hype train has to stop. He needs to be with he needs himself to say, listen, if you're gonna cover me, cover me properly. Don't be putting stuff out about how I'm the greatest heavyweight since the British heavyweight since blah blah blah. Or if I could beat Lennox Lewis. Stop that stuff. I don't want that stuff. I don't want that stuff promoting me. I don't want that sort of crap. I want to be promoting them in the manner and the way that I am. He himself says, look, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I haven't got a problem with AJ. I have a problem with the sick, twisted, sick, just, just fanboyism that's around him. That doesn't even make it realistic, some of the things he's done. And the thing is, when you put a man on that kind of pedestal, which he himself can't reach, attainable, he himself can't reach, then when the fall falls, it's a massive, it's a huge fall. A huge fall. So Josh has to be very careful how he manages his career from this point onwards. Really has to be careful. Very careful. And that's why, you know, people say, oh, and he's done a fantastic job with Joshua. Well, OK, let me see. Let me ask you a question. Could he have done the same job on Box Nation? Let me ask you a bit of question. Could he have done the same job on, you know, uh, free-to-air TV? On Dave, could he have done that? No, because Joshua had a platform. Sky Sports has been that platform. Plus the biased commentary, the sick biased commentary um, that is that is on Sly Sports. So it is what it is. You know, there are warning signs there for Joshua. But that aside, from his technical flaws, and he's too big or he's too heavy and all that stuff, a marketing just diamond. He's brilliant now. For me, like I said, one fight to go with Eddie, and then he moves on. I believe it's one fight to go in his contract. And then it's, it's you know. So it is what it is. It is what it is. I just think it's time. It's time for Joshua to move forward. I think he's gonna leave. I th I think he'll leave his promoter. If he if either one of two things, he either goes self-promoted, for me, that's risky. Or he does what I think would be the absolutely greatest move he could do is join with Al Heyman and with um, Leonard Ellaby. They will guide his career. They will guide his career. As the Sky Sports or Sly Sports, I'm going to say this much. You can't keep on being biased the way that you are. Your pay-per-view numbers will drop. And you will have there will have to be a change of the guard at the top right down. You can't keep having yes men in the room. You have to be non-biased. But as long as Sly Sports keep doing what they're doing, that's fine. I'll keep capitalizing and keep doing live commentary. It's an opportunity, isn't it? Absolute opportunity. And I'm telling you now, and I'll argue any one of you, I'll challenge any man or any woman or any alien, anybody, even God himself, I challenge. The minute AJ loses, you watch and see what happens. History serves us best if we research it. Go and look at what happened 
when the great Lennox Lewis lost the World Heavyweight Championship. Go and look the first time Frank Bruno lost his lost his unbeaten record. Do you remember Lennox Lewis when he got knocked out by Ola McCall the next morning? I remember it. I remember it because I was one of those guys who suffered the pain. I was one of those guys who, who was on the Lennox Lewis train. I was one of those guys who was wearing the Idol SPX hat and I had the, gla the glasses and all the rest of it. Level vibes and all the rest of it. When he got chinned by Oliver McCall the next morning when he was in dark shades and his lip was busted. Huh? It was a sad figure that Lennox cut. You know, the hype train has got to stop. It really has. And I'm telling you, all, all you boxing, all you boxing fans that are stuck on listening to Sky, Sly, carry on, keep going. Because what happens when AJ when AJ loses, you're gonna feel it. And when he does lose, which he will lose, it's inevitable. Oh well Floyd Mayweather didn't lose. Well, Floyd Mayweather and, and Joshua are different things. Floyd Mayweather isn't showing the, the gaping um issues in technique that Joshua is showing. But what I'm saying is it's inevitable if he keeps going the way he's going, a loss is going to happen. And when it does happen, you watch how the media and the fans turn against him. All them people that are hanging on to him at the moment, watch how they all disappear. Wait and see. But the good thing for Joshua is, as he says, he's grounded. I, 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 I want to know why he keeps dropping the thing about Nigeria all the time. I want to know what his relation, true relationship is with with uh, Eddie Hearn. I want to know what it's like. Will he get become self-promoted? Because you know, if I got close to Joshua, those are the questions I'd be asking. You know how I roll and how, what questions I would ask. So we get an idea as to where he's going to be. It just so happens that we've got media out there that might not ask us questions. But it'd be interesting if they do ask us questions. Very interesting. But I see that, you know, in terms of the pay-per-view market, when it's been truly, totally milked and rinsed, then those who are milking it and rinsing it will go running into the dark and disappear. You won't see their faces again. Much like David Cameron. He was all over the TV at one point, and now the guy has disappeared into the sunset. But uh, once the AJ train has finished, what really does the biggest promoter in the UK have? That's the question. So let's hear what people are saying in the room. I like this. Okay, yes, Ingram says Mikey. Uh, Stephen B says AJ needs to lose weight, not as sharp or powerful that size. Mark's MB3, good consistency, Ingram. Um, not quite sure what that means, but we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> I'll just take that as a thank you. The debate last night was better than pay per view card, Ingram. Well, it was. Um, should be giving you my 20 pounds, 20 pounds to you. <laughs> I think it was obvious to see from Hearn's point that even the casuals in the arena l were left disappointed in the whole event. Could the numbers be going down after last night? Possibly. Morning, Ingram. It's draining listening to Joshua reading a ready-made script to suit his PR needs. Is it that bad as a fan of his? Or I just want straight talking and that... And they hold him back for a reason. Well, there are two sides to Joshua. There is the PR friendly, you know, almost presidential Joshua. And then there's the tell it like it is Joshua. And there are moments of tell it like it is Joshua. It, it, it does slip out every so often. Uh, but I think he'll be appreciated more. I think, I think, uh, Sadly, he might come out after his first loss. I hope he manoeuvres himself in a position where he doesn't have to do that. We've seen it all before. It's only a matter of time. They'll build you up and eventually break you. I've said AJ will, will eventually have his turn with the British press. Yeah, he will. Only a matter of time. You remember, they started it with his private life with him and his, his ex-missus and the baby. Remember that story? That was an example of... To me, I interpreted that as, see what we can do with your career. If you don't toe the line, this is what we can do. 
don't think none of these things happen for the sake of them just happening. There's a reason. I told you all, those that control the media control the minds. You just what you've got to understand is what you submit to and what you accept as the truth or those who are closer to the truth. The scorecard shown before the start of the fight on Showtime. What was that all about? Well, that's letting you know the fix is in. It's letting you know. Somebody somewhere flicked that switch early to let you know what you're paying for. True about AJ scripts, but I'd rather listen to him than Wilder go up, make up his own English words as he goes along. <laughs> Bomb squad! <laughs> Brits build their heroes and then bring them down when they reach a certain level of popularity. Will this happen with Joshua? Oh, absolutely. Guaranteed. 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 Unless Joshua does the hop now and gets himself over to the States or, or sets residence up in Nigeria. Daddy won't give a damn. Joshua is very well media trained. It's all set up for him to branch off into his own promotions and it may start as soon as 2019. AJ has got another four or five years with Matchroom. He signed a seven-year extension seven, um, 18 months ago. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. But, hey, is any possibility he can buy himself out of that contract? Somebody like Al Heyman can buy him out of that contract? It'd be interesting. Contracts have been broken before. John Mark says, AJ would fill a stadium in Africa. No worries. I can see him going to Nigeria for a fight soon. Um, for one, would love to see that. Wilder versus Joshua in Nigeria, outdoor stadium. There you go. There you go. I knew that Takam would make it look messy and tough for AJ and may have lost the grounds, but not by much. Mr. Skeptical still, still pissed off about yesterday. Hope Wilder knocks out Joshua and White. Wilder versus Fury is a proper fight when Fury comes back. Well... Depends on what state Fury is in. Uh, Sky's pencil pens has p pay per views pencil in before this fight. These the fights are announced, so it's shoddy as it is. Hearn robs the casuals blind, and until the casuals wake up, the matches will stop, and I don't see it stopping. Well, it's true. Uh, Tosh Bear Grills Junior Malone Malone says yes, another show. Plus, got it live this time. That's it, my friend. Interesting plot twist. Joshua Brosh, uh, design promotion, Dilly White follows him. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. Richard Shaver, my grandpa could, my grandma could promote Anthony Joshua. You're damn right, Richard. 2015 Fury will take him to the school. Possibly. I don't really want to talk about T Tyson Fury. As far as I'm concerned, on this channel, Tyson Fury is no longer going to be talked about. His name is not even going to be mentioned until he makes himself back in the ring. Sorry. Dead what he did. And as far as I'm concerned, Tyson Fury is frozen in time until he makes his comeback. Not talking anymore about Fury. I don't want to talk no more about Fury. Uh, Mark, Mark MB3 says, uh, enough about Fury. He's done. That's like talking about the real Mike Tyson returning. Yeah, well, let's let's see. let's leave it as it is. I agree with you there. Um, I, I like Tyson, but I don't like him to the point where I'm going to keep on talking about. At the moment, Tyson Fury is becoming like Robin Hood. And whether it's a myth or not, did he exist or not? It's that that point in the moment. Yes, he beat Klitschko. Move on. The the alarm bells are ringing at Sky. Yeah, they damn well are ringing. All the red flags. As soon as AJ loses, the British fans and media will drop in like a sack of shit. Exactly. You watch all these nut huggers. You watch. Uh, just look at when Pacquiao lost. People are not sincere. Look at the Pacquiao. When all the Pacquiao people were jumping on the Mayweather bandwagon, and I told them, all these people, I said, a lot of these, these channels will shut down. They won't last. Well, they're not around today, a lot of these channels who are not hugging um, Pacquiao. My God, Ingram, we'll, we will all be laughing when Joshua leaves Eddie, as Eddie has put everything into AJ and milked him for every penny he generates and doesn't give a stuff about anyone else. No, he doesn't. We know that. We all know Joshua ain't leaving Sky. He's Sky's ambassador. If he goes to an American promotion team, the Brits will hate him. Well, Brits are going to hate him anyway. It's only a matter of time. But some Brits already do hate him. Time is up very soon for Eduardo. When he AJ loses, there's no bo bona fide pay-per-view star. I keep saying it. The 
The whole Sky team, this is John Marks, runs runs deep down to the trainers. Mark Tim says Ahara hits harder than Julian Jackson. Yeah, I I I I, I felt like contacting Julian, um, who's like almost like family to me, and uh talking to him. In fact, I might just bring him back on the show soon, see how he's doing. Uh who do they think they are kidding? The hype is actually funny, it's pure comedy. Mark Tibbs didn't say that. Tony Sims did. Yeah, much, much of the same, same muchness, really. Yes, time is sticking for Sky for sure. They've abused the pay-per-view market. Uh, ha, 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 sorry. Tony Sims has got to be the Sky coming of the year. Uh, Mikey, Eddie has raked the pay-per-view market, but when will casual say no more? When will it end? As I'm growing exhausted of it. There's only one man to ju to de dethrone AJ. That's the Gypsy King. That was the Gypsy King. I don't know if it still is. We don't know what state the Gypsy King is in now. I think people are where AJ will lose sooner rather than later, sooner or later. Uh, Miss Skeptical Pig pen Penetrator Cameron. I will pay for genuine pay per view. Josh versus Vlad, Brooke versus Spence, real pay per view quality events worthy of paying for extra for. I'll stream the rest for the free like last night. Adam Smith would label a slug and a versus snail a fascinating, a fascinating contest, a mouth-watering fight between the challenger and the champion. Oh dear, Eubank versus Quinlan, Abraham versus and Vidrin wasn't pay-per-view. What's up? Truth and facts about boxing. I remember the story the son put out with AJ when AJ tried keeping his family live private. The son were bashing him and calling him suspicious. The writing has been on the wall. It's been uh, marinating. It has it. You back on again? Wow! Oh, it has to be done. I think uh, while the, the while the uh, while it's hot and people are around and listening in, they need to know. People need to be informed. People need to be educated. People need to have. People need to start looking back in their history books to have an idea as to what's going to happen with Joshua. And Joshua, I think, is a lot smarter than no disrespect to Frank Bruno. I think he's a lot smarter than Bruno marketing wise Bruno, you know being being media trained also makes you media savvy which also makes you probably a bit more of a marketing jesus genius and joshua knows if you look joshua is but his marketing team whoever's marketing joshua has thought in my opinion when i when i was last in london i looked around saw all this stuff with joshua and all these things on the you know billboards and everything i thought you know what whoever's doing this with joshua who's marketing the marketing man behind joshua is smart because they're rinsing every sponsor that they can while they can because they damn well know joshua probably knows himself i'm not as good as people may make me out to be but i'm trying i'm trying which basically means i'm not perfect i'm trying i'm trying to become the best in the world i'm not the best i'm not the baddest man on the planet but you know one day i will be the baddest man on the planet you know you're setting yourself up for you know get out clauses one day i will lose you know He's treading a nice fine line there. He's just, you know, keeping things kind of cool. But I know the marketing man was thinking, listen, this heavyweight division, one punch will change everything. Well, listen, before that one punch lands, let's make sure that we rinse every sponsor clean, get as much money as we can and make the most of it because, you know, it's a short career. Uh, AJ performance can be looked up at as subpar, but I think his defense was actually much much improved uh if you want to hear my thoughts about last night check it out with my good friend truth and facts about boxing who was in the room last bo bland and chris mason I'm not going to talk about the fight last night forget al Heyman. what are you talking about forget al Heyman. what are you talking about obviously you'd read that understand about marketing if i'm joshua i start my own promotions he's big enough yeah he's big enough but al Heyman's a master i think um aj's in line with the masons at the moment he's got to do everything to keep them happy then the endorsements and advertisement will continue the minute he goes against them the media will crush him like fury aj in line with chris mason oh dear 
those that know just know and those that don't don't we'll leave it as that in comparison to parker and provetkin i felt aj done a better job on takham takham took multiple rounds off provetkin and parker are people being overreactional reaction about his performance not talking about the fight last night if you want to listen to my thoughts our thoughts there's three hours to listen to of it last night not going over the fight again uh, uh, it's tedious um we all knew aj's weaknesses before takham not talking about the fight knows aj's masonic hand signs in his adverts and photos for under armor links yep have you seen the pyramid signs that he's been thrown up in the air with um jay-z sort of thing well it is what it is gareth a is an aj fanboy disguise and he is a matchroom apologist well we know that i'm just gonna slip about aj not we really talk about aj i'm gonna avoid the whole thing uh any news on pay-per-view numbers in group no i don't know but i will bring my man rick glazer in the room because rick knows about pay-per-view numbers he's the king of knowing pay-per-view numbers so i'm gonna bring rick back in the room and hear what he's got to say he is a master with the pay-per-view numbers i think i'll bring rick glazer back on as soon as possible we get him in the room um we want the walk on here for a two-hour special now that's pay-per-view okay so you want the hawk julian the hawk back hawk jackson back on the show we'll bring him on the show i'm um, talking to chris mason and he's going to try and set up a Joe Calzaki special on BWTM. Um, let's see how Wilder gets on his next 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 against Stavern before we kill off AJ. Yep, that's what we've got to talk about. Um, I think AJ, Roots ones, I think AJ is trying to, to long the wilder fight. He never looked comfortable answering questions on the subject last night. Yeah, well, because there's other, there's, uh, whenever, whenever a person can't answer your question uh, directly about something, there's something else in the pipeline. Probably that's it. You know, and uh, you can't talk about wilder when he's got a fight next weekend on November the 4th. If he doesn't come through, if he comes through, it depends how he looks against Stavern. If he does come through against Stavern, nobody knows. Everyone's talking about his fight. Let's just see what happens on November the 4th. Um, Mike, is the England court Ingram has called this now. Keep it in mind and remember how we predicted the nationwide turning on Joshua. It is destined, which is sad. Ingram said Fury should have dumped the belts the very day next after the Klitschko fight. Yep. Keep the ring belt. Hey, send me the link if you've got a minute. Yeah, I'll send you a link, brother. Uh, let's get you in the room. Do I ever sleep? Well, I do sleep. and uh, But, you know, when there's something to be said, it is said. I might have to start calling myself the prophet. <laughs> people just want to listen to truth. People don't want to listen to people shouting down a line to one another. They don't want to hear garbage being repeated. They don't want to hear biasness. They want to hear the truth and honesty or people just trying to be as honest as possible. You know, I just try to be as honest as possible. I'm trying to get people in the room who are not necessarily going to agree with me that are going to have a difference of opinion but do it respectfully do you know what I mean it's what it's about talking to people but in a respectful manner let's get my man in the room from the states mr bo bland we need you in the room bo i've just sent you the link brother get in the room and you tell me your thoughts Heyman versus home would be grand yeah that would be fantastic AJ needs to start fighting fighting tall, i.e. Lennox Lewis. Otherwise, he'll be ended pretty soon. Ingram, you don't seriously believe in those Mason Illuminati uh, conspiracy theories, do you? Well, whether I do or I don't, it doesn't really make a difference to this conversation. Wilder is threatening retirement and overlooking Stavern. His foot halfway out the door and it seems it's mentally off. That's the vibe I'm getting. Are we in for a mighty shock? It won't be on a mighty shock for me. Um, is Ortiz, if Ortiz is still mandatory, he will have to fight him next. Hope Stavern puts on a good, as good a fight as Takam. I hope he puts on a better fight than Takam, to be honest. They are overlooking Stavern. Joshua is nowhere near the finish article, and whoever thought he would blow Takam away is deluded. Well, yes, I did say this. 
but you know the same people that said that Tackham would get blown away you've got to listen to these people for consistency and you've got to listen to their track record um that's why i do breakdown videos i do breakdown videos so people can understand what i'm seeing and why i'm seeing it i'm not saying i'm best uh let me let me take a joshua quote i'm not saying i'm perfect yeah i'm not perfect but i'm trying i'm trying you've got to be in the game so i'm trying we're trying at bwt and sports we're not the best but we're trying we're getting the guests on you know we're, we're doing the live commentaries you know we're getting you exclusive interviews we're bringing the world closer to you as we said we would do we're not the best but we're trying where are you Bo? we're waiting for you my friend oh if it if it counts for anything the number 33 has been all over my channel 33,000 views we had 33 viewers AJ and Hearn are tight knit, a close knit unit. They will never leave. Right. Of course. And you know that. <laughs> but where are you going, my friend? I just sent you the link via, via Skype. Heyman has been finished for over 20 years when he last, when was the last champion he had? Oh, dear. Do you know what I do these days now? I what I do when I get people in the room who just are completely off. Sometimes I just let them talk, and then when I get fed up, I just hit the block button. Um, let's see. Can't wait till next week. I don't think a lot a lot of people can't wait. I know, I know, I know. There are people waiting. Like I could call them out already. It's snakes. I can't wait until next weekend because when I'm doing the live commentary, and I will be doing the live commentary of Stavern Wilder. I wish both guys the best of luck and, and 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 success and both guys come out of that fight healthy and well but um it seems because you get fighters on the show or people bringing fighters on the show somehow i should be punished because i'm bringing fighters on the show well if that's your if that's your if that's your way of thinking well you can kiss my royal behind for it i wish both guys the best and um The Stavern, uh, Wilder's, Wilder's Stavern presser is next week, Thursday, or this Thursday coming. Um, who was you trying to shut? Who who was trying to shut you down yesterday? Who reported you? You seem angry with the abuse and cussing them out, call them slippery snakes. Not angry. It's what it is. They are slippery snakes. They are slippery snakes. But here, here's something real stupid that my friend brought up to me yesterday from the Ukraine. He said to me, Ingram, why would people suggest for you to do a live stream of Sky Sports via YouTube? I asked myself the same question too, considering it was a live commentary show. Um, Ingram is close with Bermain. I was thinking, it's close with Bermain. So why is that illegal to cheer him on? How absurd. We are all back in Stavar and wanting to win. Hey, listen. When somebody wins, when Usyk was on this channel, I love it. When Usyk was on the channel and we had James L. Bashir and we did the live interview of Usyk and we were back in Usyk and we were talking and we still back in Usyk. And when Usyk on the channel, we were doing the live exclusive interview with Usyk. I didn't hear anybody say to me, oh, you're kissing Usyk's ass. You're kissing Usyk's ass. Hmm. Interesting. They never said anything to me when I was back in Usyk. And supporting Usyk and his, his, his way to becoming uh, WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Nobody said I was kissing his ass. But suddenly, because I've got this constant interviews with Stavern, suddenly I'm kissing his ass. But, hey, I don't understand it. Don't get it. Again. That's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. And my man's in the room. Bo Bland, how are we doing, sir? Uh, not too good, man. I... I... <laughs> Every for whatever reason, when people send me my, a Google Hangout, it always tries to open it up with Firefox, and I'll be like, "Why is it always trying to?" Uh, Safari is what I like to use. Okay, but you're in the room though. Yeah, because I use my tablet. 
So for those people who don't know who you are, give people a, 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 a reminder as to who Truth and Some Facts Boxing is. I am the best American UK knowledgeable boxing person on YouTube. There's a silence in the room. <laughs> no, I'm a, you know, a boxing guy from uh, uh, Chicago, Illinois, over here, uh, and just love talking boxing. My man Baylor, me and Baylor hooked up. Uh, wow, two years ago, three years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's looked up to me ever since. <laughs> Listen, listen, I love, I love, I love Chicago, and I've got to give a shout out to Illinois. Definitely got to give a shout out to Illinois. My wife's from Illinois, so hey, I can't disrespect Illinois. If it wasn't for Illinois, I wouldn't have my wife. So shout out to Illinois, and shout out to that side of the world, and shout out to Bo Bland. Okay, um, let's see what people are saying very quickly in the room before we let you off the hook. Um, a lot of those common, common. Commenters have given you abuse for your Fury videos. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I was kissing Fury's ass. Oh, oh, of course. I was kissing Fury's ass all the way up to him becoming world heavyweight champion. And you know the funny thing about this is, I predicted he'd get beat by Derek Chisora, and then I predicted he'd beat Klitschko. Now, when I predicted he'd get beat by Derek Chisora, Fury called me out on my own video and said to me, "Hey, you said I'd get beat by Derek Chisora." I said because you. In the rematch, said I said because you kept getting knocked down by guys who were shorter than you, and you couldn't see the overhand right coming. And Chisora had just knocked down um, what was the guy? Jo was it Johnson at the time? Kevin Johnson, and he had been knocked down his career. Yeah, yeah, he did. He, he did. Knocked down, yep, Kevin he had knocked down Kevin Johnson. Knocked down Kevin Johnson. Knocked down Malik Scott. Those were two guys who were doing well. I think Malik Scott was unbeaten at the time. Um, Kevin Johnson hadn't been knocked down even by uh, by um, Fury didn't knock him down. So for Chisora to have knocked him down with the overhand right, that had some pop on it. And I thought, well, you know what? Fury is not seeing the right hand very well against a shorter opponent. Steve Cullinan knocked him over with a short the, the overhand right. Um, Pajic knocked him over with an overhand right. Guys, six foot one, six foot two, around that height it, it are the guys that are giving Fury problems. I thought, yeah, Chisora's got a great chance of winning this fight. So what does he do? He even breaks down what he's going to do before he fights Chisora. He turns south and takes the right hand away from Chisora. I mean, so, and it's not like, you see, my comments and the things I've said, I've said to a person's face. I haven't said it on a keyboard and typed it and walked off. I've said, it's on camera. Look, I did think you were going to get beat by Chisora, but did I not say you'd get, did I not say you'd beat Klitschko? Yeah, that's just right. what you're talking about. So that's right. it. You know, it's, 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 some people are just jealous. That's what it is. You're very, very jealous. So uh, you know, I, I I'm not looking for praise, and I'm not looking. I'm not looking for praise. I'm not looking for praise. I don't. I don't. My, my movements or what we do at BWT is not based on praise, and and you're the best, and you're number one, or you're doing this. It's not about that. It's about following and giving truth where possible, and giving fans and boxing fans value. For money, when I say value for money, I mean at the sense that they get to know more about their fighters. It's a hard enough task as it is as a fighter having to get up in the morning to go to a gym to get your head punched out every day, you know, and and to, to get into the training camp, sacrifice all these things. So at least give these fighters some play, give these fighters the opportunity to share their side of the story. But no, they go to these media outlets well-known media outlets and then they get all the stuff that they say edited out so we get not the true flavor of who that fighter is what their struggles about so that's why i bring them on the channel so they can come the channel and be themselves so when a big fight happens you can sit down in the big fight and say yeah i remember when he said that i remember when he said this we've been on a journey so this whole stavern thing has been a two-year journey to the rematch with with uh, Wilder. So we were talking to well, him when he was out and nobody cared about him. Well, not you know what? Not just that. Uh, not, not just that. I think what people also have to look at is the fact that uh, so many times people don't know who these fighters are. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, I remember when Blood Boxing was talking to Ndongo's whole team, manager okay. and everybody. And he gave you a better insight of Ndongo because the networks wasn't talking to Ndongo people. 
You know, like right. I mean, think about what you're talking about right now. Outside of you, who's talking to Severn? Actually, not, you know? not not even Showtime are talking to Stavern. That's what that's, Exactly. That's my point. So who's talking to Stavern? Nobody, right? So it's, it's giving people an insight because a lot of times we'll, we'll look at a guy or we'll look at a guy, hear about a guy, we think, oh, man, he's a nobody. Well, when you get what you're doing, you get what a lot of other guys are doing when they're, hey, man, do, don't too many guys know this much about you, so I'm going to bring you on the show. Or let's say you say something crazy. Okay, I'm going to bring you on the show. That way, guess what? You get to hear the other side of the story or you get to hear the story that you're not being told from mainstream media because they have an agenda to only talk to one person. Yeah, so, yeah. What, you know, you know, so th that's why, like, I'm looking at what you're doing. I'm like, I don't see a problem with it. But, you know, people can be cynical sometimes. And I, and I think that's something we just have to just look at and be like, yeah, OK. But I'm pissed about once again with Showtime. When Stavern was the champion, uh, Showtime pissed on Stavern. Now he's the challenger. They're pissing him again. You see all the Showtime things they're doing with Wilder and they're promoting Wilder and they're doing this with Wilder and that while When Stavern was a champion, they did the same shit. They pissed on him then. When they were promoting mm -hmm. the fight for the first fight, they pissed all over Stavern. They didn't pay no attention to him. Right? And That's I don't true. know if he's from Haiti and he's not American and he's Canadian and Haiti. I don't know if it's that. I don't know what it is, but he... I don't take Stavern as being a wet a yes man. He don't come across as a yes man to me. And he'll just tell you as it is. No, I don't like what I don't I don't like this shit. So he'll tell you as it is. So I don't know if he's signed up or he's not signed up. If he's not signed up, then I can understand why they're pissing on, on, on Stavern. Right? Win or lose, right. it's not about that. You know, the last conversation we had um a few days ago, we talked about he talked about being in Haiti and how him losing his title, he was in Haiti and he was so beside himself because he lost the title but when he was in haiti and he saw these kids and children in his own his own homeland that didn't have food to eat didn't have clothes to wear didn't have the basic essentials of life he said that main that was more important to me and supporting them than me no longer being a world champion and to me That's that true. is more important to me then whether he becomes world heavyweight champion or not again if he does become world heavyweight champion again he has a great opportunity to give and give back to the people of haiti do you understand yeah i agree i agree that's the sort of stuff that that's the sort of stuff that because it, it, it's to the heart it's 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 um it's what it's what me and you can talk about and relate to and understand do you know sometimes exactly. it's, not, it's sometimes it's not we talk about a champion a guy that holds a belt some people that hold a belt will never be a champion no matter what how many belts they have they'll never be a champion outside the ropes and that's where the real championship begins outside the ropes it's okay when you when you're on top of the world and you're winning and you've got an unbeaten record that's fantastic but can you get back to the top when people defeat you when people when people don't think you can do it that's what it's all about you know from from pretender or to contender to champion to losing the belt to coming back to contender to champion can you do it can That's you can, can you actually do it isn't that what the theater and the drama of boxing is all about yeah i agree i agree i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe maybe i'm crazy but i don't know what are your thoughts on what's been going on? We've talked about today about the Joshua legacy and uh, Nigeria and Joshua promotions and all the rest of it. Uh, you touched upon something that that I, I agree with. Who's ever um, looks at Anthony Joshua has a very good PR team. They're capitalizing on everything that they should be. Um, they're capitalizing on everything that they should be capitalizing on. All right, they're doing a good job. I mean, he's hot right now. And they're striking while their iron is hot. They're um, like, you know, they're they're signing him to anything and everything that that you know what I'm saying. That's not nailed down to the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, they interview Joshua. It helps that Joshua says the right thing and speaks very well, which is something Deontay Wilder do, does not do. Okay. Bomb squad. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <I> yep. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> and he makes up words as he comes along. He makes up some words. I've some of the words he says in interviews I've never heard before in my life. I don't think they ex ex 
you know, are in the English dictionary. I think they're in the Wilder dictionary, but they're not in the English dictionary. Some of the words he used, I have to rewind and play again to make sure I heard it right. Okay, I'm I'm not going to sugarcoat that for him. That's that's just the truth. Some of the words he used, I'm like, let me go back. Did I hear that right? What is he saying? <laughs> I don't know if it's an Alabama thing or it's just him. I'm not sure. Can you, you tell know, me? Yeah, you know? yeah. That's, you know, it's kind of like a guy who, uh, it's kind of like a guy who gets people's names uh, uh, messed up, right? Yeah, but he, he, he'd be different. I think that's your brand. That's what makes you truth and some facts about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> right. But his, I, I, I listen, I give his team credit. It, they know how to market him and they market him well. Yes. Now the problem with the problem here in the U S is, um, it's not so much that they don't know how to market. The thing with the U S is, uh, we are, Oh man, what's the word I'm looking for? Like in the UK, people are generally more understanding or maybe even happy for another person's success they they have this if you succeed it makes us look good type of attitude mm -hmm. uh americans are more me you know like i don't like you because you know i'm not doing good you know here's i mean if that makes any sense huh yeah it does make sense here's a guy yeah i want to i want to bring to the table he has got a thing called blueprint boxing now a lot of people wouldn't know who blueprint boxing is because you know, people don't like to do the reading or like to do the research. But for those people who don't know who Blueprint Boxing is, he was a gentleman behind the drunken master, Emmanuel Augustus. Remember Emmanuel Augustus? Yes. Right. Now, he was the guy. He was the guy that uh, marketed Emmanuel Augustus. And he was the guy who got Emmanuel Augustus a deal on EA Sports. Hmm. Wow. And you know what he said to me? He talked to me about PBC and he said, do you remember PBC had a lot of, when the PBC first came out and they got all these marketing people in and stuff, they market in the great marketers, but they haven't got, got a clue about boxing. And this is a perfect example why they haven't got a clue about boxing. Have you noticed how most, all these fighters, they get paid a lot of money, but they just seem to go into this black hole where you never hear about them for months. Yeah. You don't hear about what they're doing. Right. That's because they've got a PR engine, which is shit. They know about, they don't know about boxing. They don't know how to market in the boxing world, but they know how to market in the world of just corporate marketing. All right. So here's my point. What he said to me is fighters like um, Thurman and other certain PBC fighters. Now, Spence would be a perfect example. I wish I could work with Spence. Do you know what I'd be doing with Spence now? I'd be getting him uh, marketing underpants in America. I'd be getting him marketing tires. I'd be getting him marketing cereals. I'd be getting him marketing all sorts of crap in America. I'd be getting them on TV shows. I'd be doing all I could to get to market the shit out of Errol Spence. Because that's how you're going to get sponsorship. People he say, listen, I'm on a TV show tonight. I'm on a chat show tonight. Do you know what I mean? Like David Beckham in the UK. Okay, he's a decent footballer. He's over in America and he's going to chat shows talking. He's got no personality. But the fact he's on that mm -hmm. TV slot in America... That's a great opportunity for sponsors because sponsors will say, oh, look, Beckham's on the Letterman show or Beckham's on the, I don't know, whatever show is on TV, Saturday Night Live. He's on a slot like that. That brings sponsors in. But boxing guys don't get it. They, they got, they, they blinkered. They're just blinkered. And the minute a guy, see, Joshua's got the potential to do that. Joshua's got the potential to do that. Well, you know, also I think too is it's not so much as the 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 their the marketing was wrong. I also think that also what you had too with, with with PBC was, and this is where, in my opinion, they was doing good, but then they they fell off. What PBC also had was they had prospect fighters that they were promoting very very. I think they did a good job of promoting their prospect fighters a lot better than you see Golden Boy do with their prospect fighters and maybe even top rank. But the problem that you have with it is they wasn't putting, in my opinion, they wasn't. They were putting first off they had too many channels. That was number one. 
that was a marketing nightmare. You had too many channels that you're trying to market for. And when you have that many channels, you're trying to market all these channels and the product and the fighters at the same. It, it was like too many things that was going on at once. Then once you kind of narrowed it down, which they, they seem to be getting their feet up underneath from now. But when it comes to the fighters, they're trying to market from a, a, a standpoint of, OK, listen, um, we're going to market the product PBC. But the fighters, you guys market yourself through social media. And it's like, no, you have like you got to work together. Like Sean Porter is always on social media. So is Danny Garcia. And if take a guy that doesn't have a huge following mm -hmm. and you tell him to get on social media and market himself, how can he do that? He doesn't have a huge following. You have to do something to make people want to see him. You know, uh, think of uh, 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 like Lomachenko, how he's being marketed with only the limited amount of fights he has because they're doing a good job of every time something comes up with top rank, they're making sure Lomachenko's name is attached to it. That's what PBC has to do too. You know the other so, thing you do? What? Lomachenko is 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 on the back of R Rigondeaux as well. Well, yeah, well, yeah, and and that was another thing they gave him an opponent that like that was the say what the beautiful thing about Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao was they always and he is actually even working for Joshua and Wilder because whenever one fights they mention the other guy. Mm -hmm. Whenever one fights, people bring up the other guy. So this is what's drawing the interest. And same thing like you said with Lomachenko and Rigo. Whenever one fought. They talk about the other guy. And I think that's what's happening now and with now in boxing is at least say what you want to say about the whole situation with Joshua and Wilder and all of that. At least they're willing to engage about actually going at it with each other as to where, you know, you look at uh, uh, Thurman. He's like, well, I'm not as hungry as that dude. You know, his turn will come like that's not how you drum up people to want to watch you, man. <laughs> Listen. Thurman's like a fat cat now. He's made it, make it, made a good a bit of money. He can fight once a year if he wants to, because as far as he's concerned, he's made it. That's that's it. He's allowed to do that shit. If yeah, he's being allowed to. Up, if the money starts to dry up, you'll see a different you'll see a different situation. But you can't see. But you can't fight. Think about this, right? And this is the this this is very crucial to why uh, the Joshua fight is is a success. He fought. Imagine if Joshua did not fight again this year. Some of that momentum would have been lost coming off of a great performance like Klitschko. Mm -hmm. And I said this. I said, listen, what Deontay Wilder needs to do is, wow, they're sitting up waiting to see what Vladimir Klitschko is doing. Deontay Wilder should be in the ring fighting, kicking ass, drawing people to his side. But he took they took too long on that side doing that. Now. You allow Joshua to fight a second time, drawing a big crowd. And if Joshua would not have fought this year, I'm just curious as to, okay, he's hot. If he wouldn't have fought this year, which I give Eddie Hearns, I give him props on this. You know, you, you, you got him a good fight and, and another fight this year. But if he wouldn't have got another fight this year, I wonder what that momentum would have been like going for him in 2018. Well, I tell you one thing: people would be people would have been excited to see him fight again because they would have keep playing the Klitschko thing. Up. They would have rinsed the Klitschko, Klitschko thing out. That's what would happen. They'd have played the mm. Klitschko thing over and over and over and over and over until it would be just, it would just got ridiculous. That's what would have happened. And then he would come back January, and February, and depending on what Deontay Wilder does again against Stavern, this is going to be key. What he does against Stavern, does he win? Does he look good winning? If he goes at the end, he blows Stavern away in a round. Just imagine he does that. That's yeah. You know what though? If he blows, this, you know, I, I, it's just so unknown with Deontay Wilder if he's gonna be able to blow Stavern around. That's the only issue. You just don't know with this guy. You just really don't know with him. Why'd you say that? Oh, according to some of these fans. You know, last night that were meant to Joshua was going to blow away Takam in a couple of rounds. I didn't see them last night. They disappeared. Oh well, you you, you know, fans are um, fans can be. <laughs> we know how fans can be. Fans, you know, uh, and, and it's, uh, we we was talking about this earlier, and this is one of the 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 on the the reasons why uh, 
boxing is sometimes in the state that it's in is I don't think we have the fans that we used to have in the past where they actually followed the sport or they actually would take time out to learn a little bit of knowledge about a fight. Today's fans, they don't do that. They'll listen to, like you said, uh, Dan Raphael, who he clearly, and I'm not trying to knock him, but I've never heard Dan Raphael break down a fight ever in my entire life, ever. Have I ever heard this man break down a fight? No, no. Right. Remember, right? So he's part of the agenda. So he's part. He's part of the system. That's why you must watch Dan, Dan Raphael. Why must I watch Dan Raphael? Because you told me to. Right. Exactly. Okay. And you get people who watch him who's not like when I used to watch boxing. When I would listen to Howard Cursell, Marv Albert, Bob mm -hmm. Costas, yes. Doctor Doctor the fight Doctor Freddie Pachenko. Mm -hmm. uh, rest his rest his soul. Uh, when uh, Al Bernstein, when he had a head full of hair, <laughs> <laughs> when that man had a head full of hair, they taught you the sport. So when you're watching boxing, they was teaching you the sport so you know what you're looking at. Now they're just selling your product. Look at that knockout. <laughs> Look how he fell to the ground. Wow, what an exciting. So they're selling you a product. They're not teaching you the sport no more. They're just selling you a product. So today's fans are missing out because it's not about learning. It's about buying. Yeah. That's it's not right. about understanding. It's not about understanding. It's about the thrill. Let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. When, when Joshua keeps talking about Nigeria and slipping Nigeria in all the time, and he's talking about his father who's come fresh from, he could have said, this is my dad. Last night he said, this is my dad. He's just coming from Nigeria. Why do you have to keep talking about Nigeria all the time? Can you, can you, do you, do you think there's an undertone behind that, or do you think I'm reading between the lines too much or I'm thinking too much? I think it's a little bit of both. I think I think there's a um, there there could be an undertone in there, which is he just he wants people because uh, maybe he's hearing that because you know from from the American perspective, there's a lot of Americans, and this is kind of dumb, but there's a lot of American feels that there's a difference between us as Black African Americans and you guys from the UK as Americans. We feel like you guys well, don't actually, go through the same thing. We well, actually, they're, 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 that has been said a lot. And I would, yeah. even go, I, would even closer, I would even closer to say that guys, black guys in America are more awake than those that are in uh, the UK because of the, the troubles that have had to deal with the civil rights movement and all the rest of it. That's been the reason why people in, um, in America are more awake probably than those in the UK. And those who have right. a higher consciousness is because they have interacted with those in the States and have understood the struggles that the the the, the people and black people in America have had to deal with and continue to deal with today. Right. So I think he says that to, to you know sort of let everybody know that you know I'm still down with my roots even though I'm over here in the UK. I you know have a Caucasian promoter. I'm still down with my roots. And it could be us overlooking it. He could just be happy that his dad was there. So there's yeah, always can, hold on. You don't say nothing. For, listen, he's making it clear. Let it be, he's making it be known. I think he's made it known a few times. You remember where Samuel Peter was not, obviously a Nigerian fighter in America? Yeah, I, I Samuel Peter. To make connections like that. You say he's trying to make a what? Connection like how um, Samuel Peter, although he fought in America, was from Nigeria. Is he trying to make that connection for a potential relocating to Nigeria in the future? Uh, you know, that very well could be much true because he has, there was something I read where he said, you know, he would like to fight in Nigeria one day. So maybe he's setting that up by mentioning Nigeria, you know, <laughs> getting everybody excited. Who knows? His next fight might be, his next fight might be there. I've never heard a guy talk so much about another country, although he is a Brit. Lennox was smart. When Lennox was in the UK, he would talk about, I'm British and I'm bad, you know, that sort of stuff, with Pepe Correa. You remember that? Yeah. Well, you know, Lennox used to take some heat because people, we used to, over here in the US, we used to joke about Lennox saying, you know, is he UK or is he Jamaican? Which one is he, you know? <laughs> we used to he talk Canadian about or is he something else? But you see, but Lennox yeah. for Canada and came to the UK and signed a UK, came to the UK 
um, even though he was born, I don't, I don't, I think he was born in the UK. He went, to, suppose he went to my school in secondary school, St. Bonaventures in, in Upton Park. He always talked about West Ham, and I remember when he first tried to make the transition from from America from Canada back to the UK, he had a real problem because Frank Bruno was there, and Frank Bruno has been loved and the darling of British boxing. And there's this Canadian guy coming over. That's how it was, looking to become world heavyweight champion. Who the hell is he? So what Lennox had to do, he had to beat everybody up in the UK. Literally had to go through the UK market and beat everybody up. He had to beat up Mason. He had to go beat up Dan, uh, Derek Williams. He, and he still wasn't getting the respect to the British public until he fought Bruno. People hated him until he beat Bruno. And even, when he, and even when he beat Bruno, he still didn't get the love that Bruno got. And when he became undisputed champion, then they kind of accepted him as, OK, he's one of ours. He's one of ours. Really? Yes. Really. Yes. Oh. And, and 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 the thing is as well, you know, you think now you, you Lennox Lewis, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, should be celebrated so much more. Now I remember Lennox Lewis back in the UK, back in the time when he was being marketed. You would never get the marketing that Joshua was getting today. And Lennox was far more accomplished in his career. You know, he I remember he did two commercials. He did three commercials. He did one commercial with the British Water. He did one about domestic violence with the police. I think he may have done some pizza commercial as well. I mean, and all three commercials were, I wouldn't say corny, but they were really low budget. So mm. I don't know. For me, I just think that there is definitely a hook between Joshua and Nigeria. And I don't think it's just because he wants to fight there. There is something there more than he's letting on. But he's, I mean, why the hell do you have to tell people that my dad flew in from Nigeria? That's that's the sort of thing that you say, oh, yeah, that, just, just remember to tell him that I flew in from Nigeria. <laughs> I mean, I, I, look, yeah, you know, everybody, this is my dad. Yeah, da, da, da. I would have to tell everybody, yeah, he flew in from Nigeria. It seems to me that he's trying to keep Nigeria and the UK kind of sweet because if if the uk piss him off or, or or backlash on him he can run always run to nigeria that's what it looks to me mm. that's an interesting concept there uh okay it looks, hey, hey, no, there. Was saying, aj keeps going on about nigeria because of the fan base you just have to look at the names of the co commentators on an aj video loads of nigerian names pop up on these these on these days um AJ has a tattoo of Nigeria on his arm. Gazo says AJ basically AJ is buttering his bread on both sides, UK and Nigeria. Kelly Harley says AJ has been helping Nigeria's global image and has been thanked by the government. And isn't he a descendant of some Nigerian warrior tribe? And if you look hmm. at Dillian White, he hardly talks about Jamaica, even though I think J Dillian White was actually born in Jamaica. Was he born in Jamaica? Yeah. You listen to Dillian White's accent. You know, you're talking rubbish. He's a proper Jamaican. Okay. So, I mean, huh. so, 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 come on, talk to me. And, and, See, and, you know and, what? and Joshua was born in the UK, from what I understand. Okay, so Joshua was born in, in the UK. Mm-hmm. That's from what I understand. Hmm. See, that's interesting because I, I'm not, I'm not even going to say a lot of you. I actually do a a lot of um a lot of talking about my background and where mm -hmm. I'm from. Yeah. You know, being but from why, America, but okay. I I, 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 I do, do, do a lot of huh? Why'd you do it? I, you know what I do it when I do it I do it because a number one I am proud that right. I'm from I, I I am proud that I have that uh, as part of my heritage and my background so I am proud of it but I also do it as a reminder to myself to never forget uh, and 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 I remember my wife told me she said you know you do you do it all the time so it it, it could be you know sometimes maybe I go overboard with it mm -hmm. you know. Maybe. Maybe I, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like maybe I go overboard with it, uh, but it is just for me. It's just a thing of me just making sure that you know what, man. I don't want to forget. You know, I don't want to forget this. Okay. And how does it? 
How do you think it works with AJ being a promoter, self-promoting? Like last night when he was talking to the crowd, I could have imagined him there with a suit and tie talking to the crowd as a promoter. Mm. See, I don't think nothing happens for nothing. The way he's talking to the crowd is like, who do you want me to fight next? You know, that sort of thing. Like, oh, yeah, that was, like, yeah, that was, uh, oh, man, he was, yeah, he was playing to the crowd with that one, wasn't he? And then he used his, his influence and power to then turn around and turn on Eddie and say, he got turned around to the crowd and say, they were going, boo. And he just showed you his influence there to the promoter. How many fighters do you know that can turn to the promoter that's made them sm- so much money that can turn around and then say, boo, my promoter? <laughs> um, how, many, how many people were in that stadium? 70,000 people? Yep. And out of those 70,000 people, they've all got a story to tell. So times that 70,000, 140,000 people, I say there, because that's one person is going to tell one person. So 140,000 people. Then 140,000 times that again by 140,000 people. That was kind of funny. Turn back this promoter like that. Yeah, but could you could you imagine Keith Thurman or uh, um, Spence or maybe somebody else like that turning on, on, on Al Heyman and doing that? Could you imagine that? Never. I, never. Never. Think about never. it. No, never. I couldn't imagine him doing that. Never. To think about it, why why would you do that? I mean, why would you turn around and make make get someone to boo to your promoter? And it's not the first time he's done it now. Well, maybe he wasn't trying to get him to boo Eddie Hearns. Maybe he was trying to get. Maybe he was. He figured, hey, I, this is the setup. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he figured, hey, this is the setup, and you know, maybe to him he figured, you know what, I'm I'm setting Eddie Hearns up. I mean, well, maybe that's what he. Yep, yeah, because he said, look. You know, as far as I'm concerned, my job is to get rid of fight the opponent and get the opponent out there. And then he turns and says, well, hey, look, at the end of the day, you're wanting a knockout, right? And the crowd going, yeah, oh, that's what it is. You wanted a knockout. So he kind of said, well, it's not my fault. It was taken out of my hands. It was the referee that, that stopped that, basically. What had nothing to do with me. And then people kind of clock on and say, well, did Eddie have anything to do with the referee stopping the fight? Boo! You know, yeah, okay, let's boo, let's boo Eddie, come on. Pantomime, let's boo Eddie. Ooh. I mean, people might say, I'm lo- not looking into, th- I'm looking at things too much. But history, I keep saying, history serves us best when we look into the past. When a guy's got influence like Joshua's beginning to get, what happens when a guy like that starts to get influence? And well, influence he starts, the masses? well, a guy like, this Joshua is very uh, conscious aware, mm-hmm. and he sees what's going on with his popularity, with just everything about him. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if Joshua was looking to make a move. Mm-hmm. I really wouldn't be surprised because, or he's just positioning himself to where, let's say, if he if if he don't make a move and leave Eddie, at the very least. He can have Eddie cornered to where it's like, look, this is what I'm asking you for. You got no choice but to give it to me. But, okay, that's another way of looking at it. So, after last night's performance, what's next, in your opinion? You know, after we talked, because there was a few things that people were saying, I I guess uh, his nose might have got broken in that fight or swole up or badly badly hurt or whatever the case in that fight yeah so if that's the case uh now even more so for me i don't i wouldn't have if if his nose is actually broke let's say his nose is broken okay i don't think i would put him in a fight this is me speaking as a promoter (coughs) i wouldn't so my my top earner guy in a fight with Deontay Wilder in this next fight if his nose is broken. I would want to I put him in a fight to test it to see how it works for him. Okay. That's who's what that I guy? would do. So huh? Who's that guy? Uh shoot, you can do a Dylan White, Manuel uh Manuel Carr, uh Christian Hammer. I think any I think any of those guys would uh 
Uh, you know, Ustinov, I think any of those guys would be sufficient. Uh, Hamer's dangerous. <coughs> Hamer, dangerous. You think Christian Hamer's dangerous? Yeah, of course he's dangerous. Okay. Well, I said he was dangerous for David Price. And people laughed at me. That's true, but is he but is he more dangerous than Deontay Wilder? That's the thing. <laughs> um hmm. I don't think he's more dangerous than Deontay Wilder. Well, we have to see how much Deontay Wilder has progressed or regressed next Saturday. That's where we're gonna find out. I mean that's people, that, people, that's, people that's very that's very, very true. And that's that's something uh we was talking about too. Like I, this Deverne fight, too, is gonna tell a lot for me. And and I, I mean, listen, I'm just gonna be honest, man. I need to see, even if it goes 12 rounds, but I need to see 12 rounds of you dominating Stavern, clearly dominating him, and looking, you don't have to look over exasperately impressive, but you like to me, you have to at least make it look like, you know, um, you just have to make it look worth people even. Even people that don't like you, you have to make it look like people, even people who don't like you will say, okay, you know what? I do want to see this guy fight Joshua. I mean, look at that jab. Look at his reach. Look at his movement. I do want to see him fight Joshua. That's what he's going to have to do. I just, but I don't believe he can do it. <laughs> now, did he white foot last night? Again, oh that's, an that's another... For me, that's another marketing disaster last night with him against Hellenius. As if you were trying to even give an idea, an indication of how good Dillian White was against how he would look against Deontay Wilder. Last night's fight against Hellenius did him no favors whatsoever. Yeah, you know what? You're going to find it surprising. That depends on who you ask. Okay. That depends on who you ask. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because those that don't like Deontay Wilder, here's, here's the only reason why those who people that don't like Deontay Wilder mentioned Dylan White is because the amount of money supposedly Eddie Hearn said he's offering Wilder. And I say supposedly because I still refuse to believe. You're not talking $3 million to split. You're talking you're giving Deontay Wilder $3 million. So if you're giving Deontay Wilder $3 million, you got to be giving Dylan White anywhere between one to two. I don't believe that's a $5 million fight, even in the UK. I just don't believe Wilder and Dylan White is a $5 million fight. Well, do you, do you, um, um, based, on, based on our experiences with that promoter, do you have any reason to believe that what he's saying is the truth anyway? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> And, I'm, and this, this, this is why I'm saying no, because um, I actually was with you when we interviewed Stavern. Mm -hmm. And Stavern made that comment. And I do remember him saying, that's why I asked Stavern about the, the Eddie Hearns offer, mm -hmm. where he claimed he offered him um, double what he would have made fighting um, Pavekin. And it was like the purse bit hadn't even been ordered yet. <laughs> also, Eddie Hearns double talk. Because remember when, when Wilder said... Uh, 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 Wilder said something about he made that video talking about some when once uh, Klitschko dropped out and decided not to do the rematch. Yeah. And Wilder did the video and said, okay, "Let's fight." I don't hear nothing about Mendo's right. And yep. Hearns was like, "It's funny how Wilder is calling for Joshua, knowing he has Mendo's, he has to fulfill." Mm -hmm. Then when the shoe was on the other foot, you're trying to get him to fight Dylan White, knowing he has a Mendo, he has to fulfill. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. That, that, that's that's all you have to say, really. It's not me. It's not me hating or you hating. It's just being logical, right? But logical. I mean, he plays the game. Listen, he plays the game. Uh, I think I actually think, and I, I'm not mad at Dylan White. I'm not really not even mad at, at at Eddie Hearns because he's trying to play this American market. And one of the things that we love over here in America is drama, and he's building drama with this Dylan White Wilder thing situation, but. Uh, I believe he promised Dylan White a big fight, and that's why he's hounding Wilder to fight Dylan White. He promised him a big fight. I truly believe he told Dylan White, you know what, I'm going to get you a big fight. And I truly believe that's what he told him. But he could turn and say, well, you didn't look that impressive last night against Hellenius. That's not really what TV networks want to see. But then it could work in his favor because he didn't look that great. He would be Wilder's next opponent because of that. Yeah.
Yeah, and 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 if Wilder was to fight Dylan White, he, uh, I think if you want to if you want to drum up a Wilder Joshua, you'd have to fight Dylan White in the UK. You can't do this here in America. It would do nothing, because a lot of like a lot of us feel like the path to Anthony Joshua is not Dylan White, because Wilder is the champion already. So to be, to be the honest, path to Anthony you, Joshua, right? Bet, what you say? A, a better fight would either be between the winner of Hey Bellew rather than Dylan White. <laughs> I, I think I've heard that before. Let's be honest. Um, if Bellew beats Hay again, Hay, uh, Bellew's got that mark in America because of the whole um, Creed thing. And if Hay mm. beats Bellew, then people will look and say, look at the sparring session between Hay and Wilder and say, ah, maybe well, Hay's got a chance. Maybe Hay can do it. You know, uh, Vladimir Klitschko even said one time that Wilder was one of the best sparring partners he ever had. Well, is, was that the same? The same? Is that because Klitschko dropped him numerous occasions in that sparring session? Oh, oh, you telling sparring secrets, huh? Okay. Well, I told okay. that that was revealed in 2013, 2013, One of our first interviews with Bashir, he said that. Klitschko, yeah, he said Wilder had him out. He said uh, uh, Klitschko had Wilder out on his feet. Dropped him, dropped, dropped, dropped him twice and dropped uh, Richard Towers in sparring as well. Okay. Okay. He sparred AJ too. He sparred AJ. Now I know what happened to AJ sparring sessions. Uh, when AJ started sparring, he was wearing a white t-shirt. And at the end of the sparring session, he had, his sh shirt was covered in blood. Okay. But he never got dropped. I don't know how much more of that story. I, I started listening to some of the story, and uh, it's just supposedly by somebody in the training camp that was watching the sparring session, and it wasn't Bashir. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting to see what happened. Now. But then I heard. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely know. I, I definitely know. I, I've heard that. Um, I've heard that before. I've heard that uh, when, when, um, when Wilder was sparring um, Vladimir. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've heard stories about their sparring session. Yeah, that was that, and those stories came back. We had that in two thousand and thirteen. We were the first to get that story out. I mean, it, it reappeared somewhere, but uh, this is Bashir talking about it. So I know why they wanted to to you know. But there you go. Do you think? Let me ask you this: Do you think Deontay Wilder would have beaten um, the Vladimir Klitschko we saw fight? Uh, Josh uh, Titus Fury. No, Joshua. Do you think Wilder beats that 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 Klitschko that fought Joshua that night? Hello? I know that if Klitschko hits Joshua, that it's Wilder with that right hand that he hit Joshua if he don't get out. Ooh, but but then again, if Wilder hits Klitschko with that right hand that Joshua hit him with, he don't get out. Because remember, Wilder, Joshua, but, but, but Wilder, Joshua Wilder, fought Wilder first. Wilder fundamentally doesn't know how to block a left jab. Up today, he doesn't know how to block a left jab. He steps, he pulls his head back from the yeah. back. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. That's very true. Wilder, when Wilder, when Wilder is 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 uh, cornered, what he does, he puts his hands in the air, leaves his hands in the air, and he jumps back against the rope. So bad habits that Wilder's got. Really he, bad habits. he puts his hands in the air and he leaves all of his body exposed. Right. When your hands in the air, you're vulnerable to getting tagged because you can't. Your hands are there to protect the kingdom. If your hands in the air, the guards have left the kingdom. So you're there to get hit body and head. <laughs> give me hey, give me one minute. I'll be right back. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, if Miller does well, uh, does better against Wax, should he get a shot against Wilder before Wyatt? I don't know because where do you put? Where would you put Vac? Where does Vac go in the heavyweight division? This is a guy that Pavek can beat. So I don't know where you put Vac. Um, this is a guy that Klitschko's beat. So where do you put Vac? Miller's beat Vac. So what? That's what you would say now. Um, I mean, market. I mean, when you're thinking about marketing, the winner of Belly vs. Hay 2 would be, in my opinion, ahead of white versus 
Wilder. Because I think that whereas White has been a part of a pay-per-view card, Hey Bellew is the main event and they are pay-per-views. I don't know how, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I can see Miller signing with Matchroom's American branch so her can keep him away from Joshua. That's a possibility. I know that Matchroom are talking about signing the fight next week. White is number two in WBC ranks. Miller in, in line... Miller in line after Pule for IBF, so AJ could fight Miller next. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, White is number two in WBC ranks. Okay, what did people think about Dylan White last night? Was that the sort of performance that you thought that was the like a final eliminator for a world title shot? Did you think that he earned the right to fight and be the number one contender for uh, John Tewada? And hey. How does a Bermain Stavern versus Dinian White fight go? How does Dillian White versus Bermain Stavern go? I want to hear your people's thoughts on that. How does Dillian White versus <coughs> Povetkin go? How does Dillian White versus Luis Ortiz go? To be honest, Wilder is WBC champ. I think he's very poor. So White's performance suits the belt, LOL. See, I think, I actually think the tide is turning on Deontay Wilder as well in terms of people supporting him. That's why he's got to really go. After White's two fights, the windmill would KO him. Yeah, I think, I think the injury to Dillian White, I don't think he's the same fighter, in my opinion. I think he's the same fighter that he was back then. White is a KO waiting to happen. Every contender beats him. I don't think White is a legit top 10 heavyweight. I think White needs a legit win on his record before he starts demanding title shots. Like I said before, I think Dillian White needs to leave his promoter and leave his trainer and go to new pastures. Um, after Wilder fight, we'll see how good or bad he is. That's it. This Stavern Wilder fight is going to tell us a lot more about where the heavyweight division is going. Because, look, it answers more, it, it unlocks more answers, or answers more questions about the heavyweight division. Okay, if Wilder wins and he destroys Stavern, then it says one thing. If Wilder wins and he scrapes by Stavern, it says another thing. If Wilder gets floored by Stavern and gets off the floor and beats Stavern, it says something else. If Wilder gets knocked out by Stavern, it says something else. So if Stavern becomes WBC heavyweight champion of the world, what impact does that have <clears throat> in world boxing? What impact does a Stavern in the WBC uh, becoming WBC champion, what impact does that have in world boxing? <clears throat> you know for a fact that Stavern would go and fight the best available opponent out there. So the next guy down the line could possibly be Dillian White. How does that fight go? I agree the shoulder injury the shoulder injury killed him. That same thing happened towards right shoulder, never been the same. I agree. White fought nobody, 30 nobodies and fought Gavin in his fight prior to title shot. White hasn't been the same since Chisora fight. Helenius wasn't good for his stock at all. It wasn't. That's just you a don't think Alanis was good for her. Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry. I said you don't think Alanis was good for um, White stock? Absolutely not. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I remember I said earlier, I'm trying to figure out what in the hell, how did Alanis qualify for a WBC silver title? <laughs> I think White was a silver belt champion, wasn't he? No, that fight was for the title. What? Yeah, so that why, fight was for the W. I thought, why, why, why did why, why was White holding the belt in his hand then? I don't know what belt he was holding. I, I, I mean, who did he beat to win that? Derek Chisora? Yeah. I think so. 
So how did Derek Chisora qualify for a WBC silver? That's what I'm saying. Like, how did that fight qualify for a WBC silver title, man? I don't know. Here's something. Let me let me turn it on its head. What does what does a Stavern win do for the heavyweight division, Bo? Oh, it turns it upside down completely. And he ruins the plans of those who wanted to make a shitload of money. A shitload of money. I mean, the only you know what you'd have to do is you'd have to immediately rematch Deontay Wilder immediately. Oh, immediately. watch how quick they will. Huh? Yeah. You think the Wilder will fight with a, a third fight would happen? Oh, immediately! Oh, the networks of Peter, oh, they, they they have no problems with it. <laughs> <laughs> they have no problems, none at all whatsoever. Shit would be immediate. So they would let's immediately say, do the remit. Okay, let's say that. Okay, the fight goes, and Wilder's doing what he's doing, and he gets caught with a big shot and gets knocked out by Stavone inside the first four rounds and gets laid out cold. Oh man. Wilder's winning the fight, then he gets hit with something, gets laid out. Mm-hmm. Woo. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. And 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 and, and while it's gonna be bad, and you're gonna see a, a shitload of YouTube videos jumping on Wilder fans. Hey, see a shitload of them. You, you think you think our channel could rise in stock, um, Bo? Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. But you will see. Uh, you know what? I think from from an American standpoint, there are a lot of people I know that would personally be sick if Wilder lost. <laughs> oh boy! I tell you, I, I, could you imagine if it happened? It's it's not from the realms of impossibility to happen. No, it's not. It's it's not. It's not. It really isn't. And I know a lot of people are praying it doesn't happen. They're praying. It, it, you know what? It, it, it isn't, but put it like this. I think people are more comfortable with uh, Wilder fighting Stavern because it is a guy he beat uh, versus Ortiz. Because the Ortiz, the, that, that, that Ortiz fight, if it would have went down, oh, man. I would, You know, I had Ortiz to win that fight. I picked Ortiz to win that fight. I actually picked Wilder to win that fight. Shit, I had Ortiz to win that fight, man. I was like, man, why? Forty-eight year old Ortiz. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey. Now, I didn't say it. Mansoor said it, so there you go. Well, you tell Mansoor he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, listen, I'm forty-five. I'm forty-five years old. And that man's older than me. Trust me. <laughs> oh, he is not. Do you know what I find funny? People talk about as people in this chat room, probably the same people that said Tackham would get blown away in the three rounds are the same people now saying Stavern couldn't knock Wilder down. But they forget that Wilder got knocked down by Harold Sconius. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm laughing at I'm laughing. La I just I just turned the uh, uh, the laptop on. I'm looking at us talking. I'm looking at the comments. I'm laughing at Mr. Doc. Oh my God, Mr. Doc said, "If Wilder loses, I will die from laughing like one of those weasels in Who Framed Roger Rabbit." <laughs> He got me crying over here. He got me crying over here. Oh my goodness. Uh, Sconius you know was, was a top prospect in some universe. That's the same Sconius that Stavern stretched out in a, a round or two. One shot. I mean, do you know? Hey, 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 DJ. DJ Slick. DJ Slick, stop. 48-year-old Ortiz. Hey, 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 hey. Get it right. 58-year-old Ortiz. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> make, sh make sure you guys hit the like button on this uh, video. Hit the like button for it, guys. You know, I think, I think, I, I mean, I'm bringing a conversation up and I'm bringing, and I know a lot of people across the U Look, 
I, not, go, go across, just do a YouTube search now on Stavern versus Wilder 2, and you name any YouTube, uh, you name any YouTube channel at the moment, you're an alien, and you look at what they're all saying. Oh, don't worry, Stavern, Wilder 2. Bet they're reporting on it. Oh, Wilder Stavern 2 is a shit fight. Bet they're reporting on it. Oh, Wilder Stavern 2, Stavern's going to get starch. Bet they're reporting on it. Oh, you know, this fight's going to go, this guy's fight's crap. Don't know why it's on, don't know why you're watching it. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. They are reporting it. Now, True. the thing is, there have been no balanced view in this fight. It's been very much Wilder's going to get rid of him, that's it. If Wilder mm. gets rid of him, of course, they all look right and they look fantastic. But if they've got this horribly wrong, like a lot of people got it about Taka and and, what, and, and Joshua last night, then... What was people saying about Taka and Joshua, what they said, that Joshua was going to walk over him? Joshua's going to blow him out a few rounds. The, 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 uh, the knowledge, Spencer Firon said, what? Takam got points. He ain't getting points. He's getting stopped. He's getting stopped inside six. I didn't see that. <laughs> and that's the I don't see how. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I didn't. I, I didn't see him just running over uh, Takam. And then too, you have to remember Takam was told to be ready because they kind of felt that Pulov might pull out. So they mm -hmm. told him to be ready. He was he was training eight weeks. For this fight, just in case his number was called. So, what do you make of the the fact that uh, he, um, Wilder's talking about um, retiring if he gets beat by Stavern? I never like him fighters talk about use the R word. I think he's uh, I think he's actually being honest. I think he's saying about himself that if I'm not good enough to the point to where I lose to this guy, I should retire. And I think he was just being honest. I think he was, you know, I think in his mind, he feels like, man, there's no way I should lose to this guy because I beat him. So I should lose to this guy. So he, he's being very honest. Now, will he will he stick to that? That's that's going to be key. Will he actually sticks to that and retires if he gets beat? That's what's going to be key. But I'm with you. I don't like when guys talk like that. That's like uh, I was watching. Uh, I watched, I watched a, 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 somebody posted a picture up of um, – AJ, talking about something. I'm Scarface on Deontay Wilder. And I'm like, you know, they killed Scarface at the end of that movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> you um, know, it's like, go. you know. Here we go. I, I mentioned the thing about when he got knocked, Tackham got knocked up by Ped Vetkin. I mentioned that, but people don't pay attention to when I say these things. Okay, let's see what he says. Um, AL saying, this is sort of nonsense I have to deal with. Uh, where is he? This is yeah, sort of nonsense. This is nonsense. He says, if Wilder sparks the verd, Ingram owes him an apology. What? Why? Why? You just got to pick wrong. That's all. You got to pick wrong. I don't know why you owe somebody. You got to pick wrong. I mean, we all get picked wrong. Do that mean we owe that fire an apology? No, they say that. that. <laughs> and if anybody listens to my 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 uh, views on Stavern Wilder, I don't know how more balanced you can be. I've spoke about the inactivity of Stavern. I've talked about the slow feet and the slow hands. I've talked about the dehydration. If he was dehydrated, then Wilder's got a few problems because he fought a guy that was dehydrated. So what do you prepare for? A guy that was dehydrated. Wilder's saying it's a very easy fight. If he really believes it's an easy fight and he's coming to fight the same guy who was dehydrated, this is a totally different fight. This is a fight that's happening two years later. Not a fight that happened like immediately. It's not an immediate rematch. Mm -hmm. There's been time in between. Wilder has had injuries since that fight. Yes, he has. Wilder was getting outboxed by Spilka. He was getting outboxed by Gerald Washington. Washington. I actually think Gerald Washington was outboxing him worse than Spilka. That, that's what I'm saying to you. And it was one right because hand. Because at least Spilka, uh, up until the knockout, you can say the fight either was even or Spilka was up by a point. Gerald Washington was beating him all the rounds up until the knockout. <laughs> So, but I just find it weird. I mean, he, he never, he, he, Wilder's never said, oh, well, if, if Ariola beats me, I'll retire. He never said that. Uh, if, uh, if there's consistency, if there's consistency, I understand it. When a man starts using the retire word and then he starts talking about, you know, the business in boxing and how he doesn't like the business in boxing. So are there things going on behind closed doors that Wilder's trying to tell us about? 
And then he's first, and he's talking like a preacher now and talking about how, uh, you know, uh, you know, he don't mind if another black man gets opportunity to, to earn the money that he's made. What's all that coming from? You must understand that. You said I must understand that? Well, yeah, you American, you should know what's going on. No, man, I, I actually don't know where he's going with that. That's what he said. He said, man, if another if, if another black man wants to, you know, wants to get what I'm getting, I understand. And I don't mind seeing another black man be successful. What the hell is that? Hmm. Where's that come from? You know what, man? That's uh, that's an American thing. A lot of uh, I think he was just. I, I think he's just trying to let people know that I I'm not a selfish person. I don't have no problem watching my people do good. And I, I yeah, I, that's a that's a thing because you know a lot of times when you become successful, especially here in America, if you African American, you become successful. A lot of people tend tend to think that you're getting what they say beyond your bridges. So. Mm -hmm. He's he's probably just trying to let everybody know, hey, I'm still grounded. You know, I don't care. I don't I don't mind watching somebody else make some money and coming up. And then too, you also got to realize too, he's been hated on by some of the older fighters as well, like Tyson and them. So now yeah. Povetkin got done for PEDs. Um, Ortiz got done for PEDs, and they were trying to do all uh, Stavern for the same thing. Now I know for a fact what happened with that whole drug situation. I know for a fact. Because there are certain things I saw that certain people are not privy to see, and I've still got them. Right. Like I remember. I I'll, 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 show, I'll show. I will show you what I've got. To sh I'll show you anyway. People are not privy to see. Um, so I knew that whole uh, drug testing thing was a whole scam in the first place. Now, should if there is a defeat of Wilder, would there be any possibility? That Stavern is done for drugs after the fight, so he can get his title back. You know what, Ingram? I hope not. I really hope not. I really truly hope not. It would be so wrong and so bad because you'll have some people on one hand saying, hey, he got popped before, but he didn't get popped for a PED. He actually got popped for a banned substance. Now, there's a difference between a PED and a banned substance, okay? Uh, what he got popped for was a dietary source, uh, a supplement that's bad for his own health. The monster that's, he, that's why it was banned, huh? Monster, the monster. Yeah. Right, right. So what he got banned for was something that's detrimental to his health. But a lot of people, since they don't know the difference between a PED and a banned substance, uh, a PED and a banned substance, uh, they'll classify it all because they, they just see VADA. And they'll say, oh, yeah, he tested, he, he, he's a drug he's a drug user because VADA tested it, right? And so you'll get some people that believe it. Then you get some people who will feel like, okay, wait a minute, Pavekin, AJ, now, Stavern, come on, man. Somebody's protecting Deontay Wilder. And then you get people right. that feel that way. And it, it it would ruin any like if, if if that happens and he gets his belt back, it ruins the fight with him and Joshua now. It ruins it because people will always say, listen, regardless of what the result was, you got beat. You got beat. And it would ruin the fight. So I hope not. I hope if Devern wins, he gets his title, there's no scandal after it, he keeps it, and he either fights. Wilder again or goes on to fight Joshua. I true I truly hope not. I truly hope that's how it goes down. Okay, if it goes down that way. I hope it goes that smooth. Okay, let's let's map out. Let's go both ways. Okay, we'll go with the Stavern win first and we'll go with the Wilder win after. Stavern wins the fight. Knowing him, he'll fight the next contender in line, which will be Dillian White. How does Dillian White and Stavern go? I think that's the fight Stavern can win. I actually think Stavern is better than Dillian White, man. I do. I think Severn is better than Dillian White, but it would be because if he beats Wilder and and it's based off how he looks when he beats him now, uh, I just don't see um, I just don't see uh, Dillian White beating uh, Severn. Dillian White is, is is at times he can be a little sloppy, um, he can be hurt. Severn is a very big puncher. Uh, Severn, I haven't seen anybody knock him out. I think he he might have been stunned or knocked down, but I've never seen nobody knock him out. So and then he'll be coming in with a wave of confidence. He just regained the title, beat Wilder. So how does he last would, night? He would be a hard man to deal with. How does how does last night's 
Tackham, Joshua, how does Stavern fit in? You take Tackham out and you put Stavern in the ring last night with the skills that Stavern has against Joshua on the same night, hitting Joshua the same shots. What happens? I think... See, Stavern is a little bit taller mm-hmm. than Tackham. Stavern is about 6'3", maybe? 6'2 and a half. Inch, maybe. I mean, I mean... Huh? He's how tall? Maybe 6'2 or 6'3. I'm not sure. You could be right. Right, 6'3". But Stavern is bigger. What I mean by bigger, not muscular bigger, bulky. He's harder to move. So Joshua would have a hard time moving Stavern. Uh as uh, uh, he, he's just harder to move. Like Deontay Wilder really had to hit him with some vicious hard shots. And I think that's generally what was kind of leading to his hand problems because the Vern, he's so big and bulky and meaty. It's not like muscle. It's just, he's just a big boned meaty guy that when you hit him in the body, you hit him in the shoulders and elbow, you're hitting hard, hard, meaty bones. And and that can take a toll on you. And Stavern is smart. Stavern is smart. Like uh, even when Wilder, I think, in my opinion, Wilder did knock. When Wilder did daze him to where he was going to knock down, but Stavern knew what to do. Like Stavern grabbed him. He leaned on him. He made him carry his weight. So it's a it, it's a trickier task for Joshua if it's Stavern. Okay. Um, Doc, Mr. Doc says Stavern, Tacken would beat the shit out of Stavern. Yeah, I think Mr. Doc is. Are you drinking that 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 Irish Spring uh, gin flavored water again, man? Thanks, <laughs> my man, Mr. Doc. Uh, Stavern, I swear, was poisoned in the first fight against Wilder. Okay, let's take the let's take the the White fight to one side. So we go down the rankings after Dillian White. Let's say Luis Ortiz. Would you? How's the Luis Ortiz fight going, Stavern? Oh, Luis Ortiz beats Stavern. He beats okay. he beats he beats the Vern that skill set. Um the, the Luis Ortiz has a very good jab. He gives angles. What's he, the, he, what, uh, what's the Ortiz? You know what though? That you know what though? I take that back because that depends on which Luis Ortiz I see. If it's the Luis Ortiz that we saw against um Dave Allen? Uh, uh, oh, if it's the Luis Ortiz against Dave Allen, nah, nah, nah. So so are you saying that Luis Ortiz is gonna get better at 48 years old? He <laughs> stop stop. He is not 48 years old. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, uh, are you sure that he's going to need, he's not going to need more pills, the high blood pressure pills, if he's got a fight against the Man, I'm going to need some high blood pressure pills. You keep talking to me about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all right. So let's flip the other side. I, and so we've talked about the universe. Should Stavern win the title? Would Anthony Joshua takes the Verna the next fight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he will. Eddie Hearns will take that in the next fight. Why? Because what, it, it, it's, it's not so much as Stavern as it is the belt. He would go in and gobble up that belt. That way they could go in on and fight um, Parker, and he would become undisputed in 2018. The left hook. Does Stavern carry enough power in the left hook to hurt Joshua? I think so. I believe it. Stavern is a hard puncher now. Don't don't get it to he's a hard puncher. He's you know, he's a you know, he's a tough, rough, rugged dude himself. And how much do you buy the dehydrated story? Uh, you know what? I'll I'll put it to you like this. I'll give Stavern the benefit of the doubt because he's never uh, uh I've never seen anything where he's known to be a liar. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I know we was talking to a uh, 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 was it was it Chris earlier? Yes. And Chris said, "How can a heavyweight be dehydrated?" And um, I, I get his point, but here's the thing: if you're used to being two fifty, two sixty, mm-hmm. and you drop, let's say you used to being two fifty, two sixty, as heavyweights is different. Uh, if you're two sixty and you drop two fifty two, those eight pounds can really uh, uh, affect you. Those eight pounds can really affect you as a heavyweight when you're that heavy. They can really affect you and make you feel dehydrated. So. Okay. Let's now turn the other way. Wilder wins by brutal knockout, as a lot of people are predicting here. 
Who does he fight next? Dillian White? And why? Okay, here's the thing, and I, I mentioned this earlier, right? Okay. Um, he could fight, in my opinion, he has, he actually has four choices, but one of them really isn't a choice, okay? Uh, you can try Luis Ortiz again, but I don't think nobody wants to see him try to take that route again because of what Luis Ortiz did. So scratch that, right? So you have three other options, in my opinion. Uh, a unification match with Joseph Parker, but you're going to have to offer him a shitload of money. Okay? Because they know they can get more money fighting Joshua than they can Deontay Walker. Matter okay. of fact, you may actually have to offer him more money to fight Wilder. You may have to off offer Joseph Parker more money than you offer Wilder. <laughs> and that's just being honest. Okay? He, you may, because you're going to have to offer him some money. Right? And then uh, either Dylan White or Derek Shazor. Okay. And I think and I think either I, I think those are your three choices. Okay. What about a fight with Big Baby Miller? The only reason, listen, I'm Dylan White and Derek Chisora, and this is the reason why is you would drum up UK interest because okay. the fight would have to take place in UK. Mm -hmm. uh, you can fight Big Baby Miller. You can. That's big point, point. But if if I'm looking at the rankings, um, and I am looking at the rankings right now, I don't see Gerald Miller in the WBC rankings. So what's this? Uh, big move, with the fight between Vac and Miller, what's that for then? The fight between who and Miller? Yes. Who's fighting in Miller? Vac. Maris Vac. Ooh, that's new to me. I didn't know that. You just, I, I didn't, I didn't know he was fighting him. Yeah, he's fighting. He's fighting on. Is he even the same? November the eleventh. He's fighting. I think. And that's Maris Wax. Wax. Okay. Well, Maris Wax is when uh, he's ranked number six, I think, by the WBC. Okay. So Miller's fighting Vac next. Okay. Who am still? Oh, who am actually? I just think it, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, who I've actually met, and I've seen him sparring with Derek Chisora, and he's a one hell of a lump of a fighter. And I saw him physically bully Chisora around the ring, push him against the ropes and bully him. And that was when he was sparring the, the day he got injured for the, to, the Fury rematch. Originally. Okay. I just think if you, if you want to jump up, because the fight has... Listen, this Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua fight has to take place in the UK. That is where you're going to get the most money. It really is. You're going to get the most money if it's in the UK. All right. As much as uh, uh, you know, I, I love my country, but American American fans don't support fights like UK fans do, regardless of even how good they are sometimes. So, what do you think? You've got you've been waiting for a heavyweight champion for a while. You've got a heavyweight champion again. Why do you think that Deontay Wilder has not had the crossover appeal that he should have uh, give me one second ingram i'm gonna answer that question give me one sec well Gucci says stavern is the only man to actually ko or Ariola. he retired in the vitali and wilder fights and mr skeptical says white is staying away from chisora bollocks a a white Chizora rematch would be big money and a big fight in the UK. Mm. Would people pay to see Anthony Joshua fight Derek Chizora? What's more, what's what means more to people? Anthony Joshua against Derek Chizora or Anthony Joshua against Dillian White? And do people think that Dillian White has improved enough? to warrant a rematch against AJ? And do people think that Dirk Chisora style would give AJ more problems based on the tack and fight last night? Have your say. White is trying to get up in the rankings. He would fight Chisora if he was higher ranked than him. Okay, White. You'd want to see Dylan White fight AJ again. And based on, since his, since his loss to AJ, how much better a fighter do you think Dylan White has become? And do you think that Dylan White has progressed enough 
to actually be a, a serious contender and could beat AJ? Uh, Dylan White is a Commonwealth champion only. That's the far as he'll go as a Commonwealth champion. A tier fight I wouldn't mind seeing, Dylan White versus Takam. I would love to see that fight. You asked me about Deontay Wilder earlier. What was your question yes. again? Yeah, the question about Deontay Wilder is, why have you got you've got an American heavyweight? He's tall, he's big, he's got, and he's got what people want, which is KO power. Why is he not, mm-hmm. you know, connected with the audience? Why is he just stuck in Alabama? And if he wasn't from Alabama, and had he been a New York heavyweight or a heavyweight from California or from Midwest, would he have got more attention? Wow, Ingram, that's a very good, powerful question. And I'm going to answer this question as exceptionally honest and brutal as possible. Mm-hmm. When you're black in America, mm-hmm. the only way you get that kind of notoriety is you have to be a villain. Or you, 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 you're not gonna get there being the nice guy. Out of if him being from Chicago, he would have maybe a little bit more fans. Mm-hmm. Maybe him being from the Midwest, he'd have he have a little bit more. Uh, 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 he'd have a little bit more fans. Mm-hmm. That's about it. But because l- look at the guys, because I like the thing with Deontay Wilder is um, Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, he he has a great story. Uh, lots of people I've talked to that have met him said they they like his personality. He has a great story, mm-hmm. uh, you know, took him boxing for his daughter, okay? But um, even if you want to say, well, his skill isn't all that, let's take the fighters that does have skill, like the Andre Wards, the, or, you know, Earl Spencer's and all of them. They're not being heavily touted around like that. Uh, and when you're black in America, as, as, as a fighter, as boxers, you have the fighters that get the most attention are guys who play villain. And that's just the truth. Floyd Mayweather made all the money. What'd he do? He played a villain. And that's the truth, right? So I think part of it, it it's a combination of things, but it also has to do with um, American fans. And then too, you know what too? African Americans don't even support their own fighters. Like Floyd Mayweather had to appeal to the Hispanic fan base because he, he you know, he know, uh, you know, we're not going to buy fights. You know, we always looking for a hookup or find out who's watching the fight and go to their house. I'm about to say you know. something that's going to shock a lot of people, and I'm and I'm sick and tired of seeing it. Somebody said, "Stop playing the race card." My response to you, Irish Sam, is this: I live in Ireland at the moment. Let me tell you something. You take a step and step in our shoes, and walk in our shoes, and have mm-hmm. our background, and experience what we experience, and deal with what we deal on a daily basis, and take away what you've got in your world, and have what we've got in our world. And not just do it for a day, not just do it for a week, but for a lifetime. Switch roles. I be you and you be me. And all the right. things well, that you, you can do what? and the things I can't do. And it's not about a race card. It's about experiences. No. You can't take well, away it, well, it's, experiences. Go ahead. It's not even that. I just gave you examples. Name me someone outside of Floyd Mayweather that was able to make that kind of money not being a bad guy. That's that's That, that was black. That's all I'm saying. Name me somebody in the modern era who was not Floyd Mayweather that was black that didn't have to be a villain that's been able that's been able to make the money Gennady Golovkin make that's been able to make the, you know what I'm saying that's been able to get the push like a Lomachenko and all the name somebody like that that's you, all what you say back then um uh you know what when you start saying and then stuff too, like you that. know what else too you know you know what else too it's also hard for uh we, we like the thing with boxing too here in America is you have other sports that kind of dominate the scene football basketball golf you know you got other sports that kind of dominate the scene over here also as well and they're year round as to where like we just talked about how a lot of fighters uh only fight once a year or we get we get maybe what two three big fights a year so mm-hmm. okay would you what about Sugar Ray Leonard back then how he was on Coca Cola and all that stuff back then. Coca, uh, Sugar Ray was a real star back then. He was a golden boy back then. Yeah, yeah, he, yes, he was. But I, I, where has our Sugar Ray Leonard been since then? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where has, where, where has our Sugar Ray Leonard been? And he was the only one. But where has our Sugar Ray Leonard been since then? You know, we haven't had another Sugar Ray since then. So, and then even Sugar Ray didn't make the kind of money Floyd made. Um. 
Who would have come closest to it then? Andre Ward, you'd say, wouldn't you? No. No, Andre Ward is not loved like that over here in America. No, I'm talking about... He's, yeah, well, then who then? Who, who, who is it then? Who would it be? <sighs> I, I honest to God, man, I can't even think of nobody. I think maybe, I think a lot of people has a a, a, a sort of affinity affection for Earl Smith or uh, Earl Spence. Yes. Uh, and a lot of people have a lot of respect for Sean Porter. A lot See, of Earl fighters Spence, have a lot Earl, of respect. For Sean you know, Earl Spence, you can't you can't keep living on a myth, or you can't keep living out dining out in one fight. He beat Kell Brook. Let's see who what he does against Lamont Peterson. I love Lamont Peterson. I think he's a very yeah. all round fighter. He, you know, he's lost, he's won. He's, 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 he can box, he can slug, he can fight from the outside, he can fight from the inside. A talented boxer. Okay, he might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think he's a very good fighter. Right. And yeah. uh, we have to see how, how, how Spence does against him. Now, he's you know, not, I like. Now you, you know what I like about Spence. I like his his demeanor. He has a very, he has a very calm, uh, you know, he has a very quiet demeanor. But he also has some dog in him. Like like him and Terence Crawford. I like I like their demeanor. Like Terence Crawford has some dog in him. Yeah, but right? those two guys you mentioned there, they're about the business. That's what they say in America. Them two guys are about the business, not the business. The business. The business. <laughs> <laughs> They're about getting you in the ring, give you that business. The business, yeah. They're about that business, yeah. They're too serious guys. Yeah. They don't need no, they don't need no PR marketing in terms of how good they are because they are good. They just need some. Well, and then, well, 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 and then, well, and then who they fight? Like, uh, definitely, you have to edge Terence Crawford. I mean, look at who Terence Crawford fought. Like Terence Crawford didn't make you wait for Victor Postal. He didn't make you wait for Undisputed. OK, you know what I'm saying? When, you know, Terrence Crawford didn't say, who's in Dongo? I'm not fighting in Dongo. Nobody know who he is. I ain't going to make no money fighting in Dongo. He said, no, nah, no, nah, he got them belts. I want them. Bring him. Right. He talking about going up. Now, Spence, he's already calling out Thurman. You know, and you love that if you're a boxing fan that he has that attitude. Mm -hmm. But even you when, know, I when I talked to Crawford, when, he, when, when I talked to Crawford, when he was, when nobody cared about Crawford and he was going to get beat by Ricky Burns and he wasn't very good and all the rest of it, I remember sitting down talking to him. And the one thing I gathered about Crawford, apart from being an excellent boxer, is that he's a historian. He studied the sport and studied the opponents. And he said himself, look, this is about history for me. So he's a guy, he's a goal getter. He's a yeah, goal getter. He, yeah, right. But he's a guy that seriously wants to. Um, be a you know he, he he wants to be in it for the the record books that's why you've got that attitude with with crawford yeah right and that's why he went then that's why he went for undisputed that's why he didn't you know that's why he didn't look down on Indongo. he didn't say i ain't got to fight in dongo what i need in dongo for Indongo don't do nothing for my resume he didn't do none of that you know matter of fact when i remember when he was going to fight felix diaz and he didn't fight felix diaz he fought somebody else Mm -hmm. And when he found out the reason why he didn't fight Felix Diaz, he went back and said, "Get me Felix Diaz." You know, <laughs> he went back and said, "No, no, 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 no. Y'all think this guy's not a good fight? Get me Felix Diaz." Okay, let's and talk. A let's talk a little bit about uh, Crawford in the sense that why the Pacquiao fight hasn't happened. Oh, Agra, <laughs> you are on it. Okay. <laughs> You are just on it, my man. Talk to me. If that was Oscar De La Hoya, and they were trying to angle that fight, that fight would have been made already. You notice how Jeff Horn got to fight Pacquiao. Everybody else but Crawford is going to get that fight against Pacquiao, I think. <laughs> If Crawford, uh, beats, if Crawford beats Pacquiao, where does that put Crawford? If Crawford beats Pacquiao, he'd have an all-time great on his resume. Uh, a future all-time great on his resume. Kind of like any. And here's the difference is where a lot of people felt like it was a a um, a gift decision to Jeff Horn. Yeah. It wouldn't be like that with Crawford. Crawford would actually beat Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> okay. It would be like he really beat this dude, you know. Uh 
But see, I don't know where that puts Crawford because there's a trend for whoever beats Manny Pacquiao. That winner is just not received very well. Have you noticed that? Uh, yeah, that's that's a point. Uh, you look at the Timothy Bradley fight when I predicted that there'd be a rematch and Bradley would win the fight on a controversial decision. Yes. Yeah. That. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not, even when Floyd beat him, fair and square, they, you know, had the shoulder thing and everybody, oh, you beat a one-armed man. So it's, I, I, don't, I don't know how that would be received because for some odd reason, when you beat Manny Pacquiao, that winner isn't embraced very well. Like, I, I've like, never seen anybody who beat I don't get is why an American fighter gets hated on by a foreign fighter. I, I don't get it. Why a foreign fighter gets more publicity than the un-American fighter. That would be like the Philippines playing American football or basketball and the Americans booing the American team and cheering the Filipino team. It don't make no sense. Mm. Ooh, man, there's a lot I can say to that one, Ingram. <laughs> Let's go, bro. Let's go. There's a lot I can say to that, Ingram. There's a lot I can say to that. Uh, I don't think it's so much as being hated. You have to understand, man, America is, is like, over in the UK is UK, right? Okay, if, if Floyd Mayweather came from Kazakhstan, if Floyd Mayweather uh -huh. came from Mexico, Floyd Mayweather came from okay. the UK. Okay. How much more money do you think he could have made? He could have made a lot more. Uh, he probably, he probably, he probably could have made a lot more with the accomplishments that he had. At the same time, he probably could have made a lot more because he would have been more embraced. But you can't knock what he what he was able to do. I know. I know. Yeah. And that, what he's been able to do against. Against you know what, I'll, you know what, I'll, I'll put it like this. I'll, I'll put it like this. I think outside of the money aspect, I think the difference would have been he would be more embraced and appreciated and loved. Because Floyd is a brilliant boxer. Floyd is a brilliant boxer. Shogun Boxing has jumped in. He says, with these fans, it's not about nationality. It's about color, point blank. Hmm. I think nationalism does play a role in it, though, also. Think because so? think about think about the, the, the Wilder Anthony Joshua thing. You know, a lot of people are backing Wilder simply because he's an American heavyweight. A lot okay. of people are a lot of UK people are backing Anthony Joshua because he's a he's a UK heavyweight champion. So I think that I, I think you I think it has a lot to do with also pride. You know, let's play the parallel universe game, Bo. Um, eight, um, Six comes up with a very good point here. If AJ was born in America, uh -huh. and the same come up as Wilder being as the same as AJ's now, if if AJ, if Wilder was born in the UK and the British were where AJ is now, swap the roles, what would happen? Wilder would be big like Anthony Joshua is big right now, and the reason why I can give you plenty of examples of British fighters. Who uh, were who who got big like that? Um, you know, look at uh, Croya. Look at look at how celebrated Jorge Linares is over in the UK. So uh, yeah, no, Wilder would be big. Uh, Joshua would be, and then too, if you're talking about would Joshua have Andrew, would Joshua have Wilder's record? If Joshua was in America, you've got to take into consideration the American psyche as an American black yeah. man. Yeah. And the things he would, you can't just put Joshua from the UK in America because just like that, because you've got to take in the American psyche. What would it be like being an, Amer an American black man? And, and the things. It would be a different, up. yeah. It, it would be, it, his psyche would be different. Uh, well, everything, everything about him would be different. Well, yeah, he's, he'll look around and see the various people, the political figures, the Martin Luther Kings, the Obamas, all this sort of stuff would be his, it would be in his day to day growing up life. In the UK, you don't have that as much. You're not influenced mm. by the civil rights movement or all these things are not things or the NAACP. They're not. Black on black, yeah, black on black, black crime. On black and crime. 
Over the dismissiveness of black deaths and stuff like yeah. that. No, you do whatever. You've, you've got to interweave that into what Anthony Joshua would be. It can't just be like, well, Anthony Joshua, the boxer, you've got to think about his psyche and things he'd be saying and the PR team behind Anthony Joshua. And Wilder in the UK, well, Wilder wouldn't be Wilder. Wilder wouldn't be speaking the way Wilder's speaking, would he? What sort of a lifestyle would Wilder mm-hmm. be having? So it's, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. Yeah, it is. It is. That's why. That's why. It's, it is. That's why. You know, the the questions you ask they're very important questions. I know they make people uncomfortable, and they and a lot of, like a lot of people don't like the answers. And I think some of the reason why they don't like the answers is because they they already know what the answers are, and that it's it's the truth to a certain degree. Somebody you know, said I mean, Joshua would already be in prison. Oh, no, I know he would be in prison. <laughs> but I do agree with somebody said Joshua's popularity would be like Crawford. Yes. I agree with that. His crop, his popularity would not be as high here as it is in the UK. Okay. Um, how about this for John? I'm, I'm going to be part of uh, Wilder's um, promotional team. And do you know what I'm going to do? What you going to do I'm now? Gonna tell, I'm going to tell Wilder to leave Alabama and relocate to New York or Los Angeles. No, 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 no. Why? No. Why? No. A number one, wild do- <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> oh man. A number one, uh, his identity is Bama. And you don't want to leave the South and go to California or New York and start promoting yourself there. I don't know if he would fit in in California or New York. Why? Because he's a because he's a he's a he's a down good down south home he's a down south homeboy. And even though his core base, like his core base is Alabama. That's his core base. It's Bama. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. His core base, he can't even sell at Alabama Stadium. Come on. Yeah, but okay, wait a minute. You take him to New York or Los Angeles. What you think you're gonna do there? Nobody knows him like that there. That's why you build your... okay. Floyd Mayweather had was a Grand Rapids, Michigan, yeah? Oh, he's fights in bloody Las Vegas. He ain't born and bred in Las yeah, Vegas. But that's the, wait, wait a minute. He was in Las Vegas where the mafia, where, where the, the, the history of Vegas is mafia. And Floyd walked around like he was a gangster playing the bad boy role, making money for Vegas. Playing the bad boy role, getting in trouble and all them things. Those are those things that come. And then, you know, it, it, it also helped that um, – Beginning, Floyd did have a very fan friendly style. Now later, Floyd Money Mayweather was a little different. Floyd talked crap. Um, we talked about this earlier. I like Deontay Wilder, but Deion, you know, sometimes it is hard to understand Deontay Wilder when he's talking. Sometimes. Well, hold on. Roy Jones had that same problem, didn't he? No, he did not. Roy Jones could talk. He could talk his oh, ass off. <laughs> when Roy back, if you listen to Roy early in his career. Yeah, right. but see that's that hype. But see that's that hype stuff. That's that street, you know, that street stuff. And people kind of liked it. That, but and even then, Roy then, had issues trying to drum up interest in his fights too, as and well. Then Roy and then Roy slowed down. People could hear him. People. Then Roy slowed down, and people could hear him. Get, you know what? You <laughs> you're so crazy. Think, go back and listen to Roy's earlier career. Go back and listen to him. I, 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 I used to watch Roy a lot. He was just I, all hyped up I, and stuff. Look at Roy and say, "What the hell's that guy saying?" Did he say yeah. you got Lam- I, I, Lam- I understood what he was saying. He was talking street slang, baby. What well, yeah, you might have understood what he was saying, but the common guy on the TV didn't understand what Roy was saying. No, you guys over in the UK with your crumpets and tea couldn't understand what he was saying, man. No, well listen, listen, I got to I, I forced myself to get to understand what Roy was saying because I like Roy's fighting style. <laughs> I understood what he was saying. I like that. Oh, I, I liked all that hyphy stuff he used to do. Yeah, I like he he'd be all hyped up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this guy right here talking all that. Oh, I liked all that, man. I was like, yeah, yeah, but hold on. Right. Yeah, 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 but hold on. He would do that stuff and then he'd fight the postman afterwards. Yeah, Roy, yeah, yeah. We're talking about when he fought. I remember he fought that police officer. <laughs> uh, I said, How about remember that time? Remember that time when he played a basketball game and after the basketball game he went to a fight? I remember the mm-hmm. fight where you had the camera in the ring with him and he had the headpiece on with him during his fight? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But Roy was, you know, Roy was a very good boxer. But then, you know, there were times where 
he knew how he knew how to do certain things to kind of entertain you a little bit. Okay, let's talk about Roy because then. he was just levels above everybody else. Yeah, but when we talk about Roy, Roy's a good example. Roy, Roy, okay, there you go. He was is not Roy, was Roy Jones not a superstar? No, he was not a superstar. What? I don't think Roy was a superstar. Roy is well, people considered super Superman. He was considered Superman, and and you know they were talking about Roy Jones fighting Mike Tyson. Do you not remember those days? Come on, I remember those days, but I don't think he was a superstar because Roy wasn't doing no pay per views, not like that. So he wasn't a superstar. He was a he was a star. He's one of the top stars. He's one of the top guys in boxing. But he just wasn't a superstar. I mean, and that's my opinion of what I feel a superstar w- was to me was somebody like Oscar De La Hoya was a superstar. Roy was never a suit. Mike Tyson was a superstar. You know, these are guys that could walk down the street without being mobbed. They had rock star status. Roy never had that, in my opinion. Roy didn't have rock star status, you didn't think? No, Roy didn't have that rock star status. That's in my opinion. He didn't have rock star status, in my opinion. Like, I don't ever remember people mobbing, blocking, you know, shutting down malls and blocking off traffic because they're trying to get to him. Mobs of people trying to get to him, to Roy, like Tyson, like uh, even De La Hoya. Hell, hell, even Floyd, to a certain degree. Canelo. So Canelo's a superstar. Canelo's a superstar. So what was it that Roy, did make Roy a superstar then? I mean, in terms of what do you think it was that he didn't cross over then into that superstardom? Well, there was some fights that uh, I think a lot of people uh, that Roy didn't 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 get. Um, you know, I think there were some fights he didn't get, and, it, and not not that it was his fault, but the division that he was in uh, didn't was you know kind of lacking talent, kind of lacking that big. Um, that you know that that rivalry Roy didn't have that rival guy that we wanted to see him fight like they, like every time you mentioned Lennox Lewis you knew eventually he he was going to have to fight Tyson that was built up to that fight every time you mentioned Floyd you mentioned Manny Pacquiao we built up to that fight like right now when you talk Keith Thurman you talk to uh Spence or you talk Terence Crawford you talk Spence and Thurman mm-hmm. uh Roy Roy never had that other guy that you looked over at to his, as his opposite to build up for him and that what he was missing he was missing that other guy that opposite okay that's fair enough um so you let's go back to the, the black the the black american and being the superstar of boxing um mm-hmm. spence has the possibility to have that crossover as you know I, you know what i put it to you like this spence has a very if spence can 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 catch thurman and catch Crawford, yes, most definitely he has a chance to be an American star, superstar, American superstar. Now, I as think- far as crossing over, I don't know. I don't know about the crossing over because crossover stars, that's very hard to be a complete crossover star. That's very hard to do. There's two. There's something sim- similar between Spence and Crawford. They both don't like doing interviews. Why do you think that is? No, I, I, I don't. No, I no. They do. I've seen Spence on a lot of interviews. I think the thing with Spence is just his his nature. He's not, you know, Spence is not a very talkative guy. You know what I'm saying? He, he's not like a dude that like that talks a lot. Uh, if you watch some of his interviews, he keeps his answers very simple, very short. Um, I think Terrence Crawford. Now, from what I've seen in some of his, interviews, I think he likes interviews. Uh, but uh, you know, again, these are guys who would rather be in the ring fighting than talking. You Bring know, it down. but Terrence Crawford gives. I think you, you with Terrence Crawford, you have to catch him. He's one of those moment interviewers. Like if you catch him, like if 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 he's comfortable with talking to you, like he was on ESPN, because he's he's familiar with Max Kellerman. Okay, he's like okay, cool. He's he's more open. But I think if you catch him after a fight, he's kind of more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just still in fight mode. <laughs> then wanting to talk. Brian Jennings. Ooh. Signed with Rock Nation at one point, now gone to top rank. What went wrong? Rock Nation does not know how to promote fighters. You talk, we talk with PBC. Rock Nation is even worse. They, they do not, not just know my fight. Rock Nation don't know how to really promote fights. 
I mean, think about this. You had Andre Ward and Kovala. Even with the rematch. And Koto. Huh? And Koto. He was with Koto as well, the Rock Nation. Right, Koto. Yeah. And the only reason why that Koto fight did good because he was fighting Carnello. And they did 900K in sales. But they did a horrible job of promoting that fight. And then the fight itself with the, with, with the, the, the concert at like a halftime show concert. I didn't need to see that. <laughs> you know, I don't watch. I didn't need to see them have that concert, whatever that was. So, but they don't do a good job of of promoting the fights. Think of the Andre Ward Kovalev rematch with all the controversy from the first fight. It still didn't do great in numbers and pay per views because they didn't really do a good job of selling that fight, and it didn't help that um, Andre Ward missed the face off. Kovalev missed some type of meeting that they were supposed to, you know, it was it was just a lot of mess going in between the two promotional companies. I'm gonna say that. Okay. And it kind of hurt the ability to sell that fight. But the good the job of promoting the fights themselves. Like I didn't see a lot of billboards, I didn't see a lot of commercials. You know, Oscar Day, as much as I talk about Oscar De La Hoya, he does a very good job of promoting his fights. He promotes them for a miracle. You had 1.5 million people watch Canelo Alvarez fight Chavez Jr. That's a promoting for your ass. He might promote well, but he's awful to listen to talk at a press conference. Who? Um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, De La Hoya. Oh, okay. He's awful to listen to at a press conference. Uh, um, uh, I like to, um, present, uh, um, uh, um, uh. <laughs> um, yeah, and, um, yeah, uh, um, yeah, this is going to be a great fight. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, and I'm going to, uh, um, yeah, bring up, um, yeah, uh, Canelo, yeah. You, 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 come on, man. You killing De La Hoya. Come on, man. <laughs> I can't listen to any De La Hoya press conference. He's terrible. He's awful. <laughs> come on, man. He's not that De Hoya, bad. If De La Hoya is not high on crack, not be funny. If he's not high no, he's on not. crack, right? Then he's drunk. Oh, if he's not drunk. Then De he then he does, then he's um earning an iron. De La Hoya is like. I this, love this, De La Hoya, this, man. But this is gets, Oscar. This is know. Oscar. Oscar's like Oscar's like Canelo. He he did good in the fight. <laughs> you you guys are criticizing Canelo. My man Canelo. He went twelve rounds with the vaunted, uh, hard punching GGG, and he didn't get knocked down. Uh, he was counter punching very great. I opened up the vault and I gave Canelo the 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 keys on how to fight. I gave Canelo the inspiration. He's an inspiration to me as his promoter. So hey, you you guys criticize Canelo. But Canelo's the future of boxing. You just saw it for yourself today. He's the future. Remember, he kept giving people the keys to beat Floyd Mayweather. Man, I'd be asking oh, hey. for a frigging refund every time. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> dude, these keys don't frigging work. I can't get in the damn house. I'll be locked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's. A, he's you know what? If I ever see Canelo, <laughs> I'm gonna ask him. Hey, listen, can I see the keys to your house, please? And I'll say, can I have the key to your house, please? He said, why? I said, I just want to see if your key to your house actually works. Because the keys you've oh, been giving people don't work at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me, you say, hey, man, was you sober when you gave them that blueprint? <laughs> <laughs> Might have gave them the wrong blueprint, shit. <laughs> I've seen a lot more of Lou DiBella recently. What's the situation? And he... I lost a lot of respect for Debella anyway. Wasn't that? Was it, I'm sure it was. Was it the Bella fight? Or was it Debella? The the promotion with uh, no, it was that was De La Hoya as well. When um, what's his name? Um, D Danny Garcia's father made the derogatory statement to to Thurman, mm -hmm. and they kind of just let the press conference go ahead and didn't allow him to say anything. Just carried him, let him keep carried him like like nothing had been said, like it was acceptable. Yeah. Here's the thing, and I think I, I talked about that. Um, okay. That monster with um, Angel Garcia, see, it was cool when, when Angel Garcia was doing that because people forget. I remember when he said something. He would, I remember he told Amir Khan something about riding the carpet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic carpet. Remember that comment? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he said something about Amir Khan riding the carpet. So Angel Garcia always been flipping the mouth. 
It's just that this time he was flipping the mouth about a fight that was going to be on national TV. That's all it was. Okay? But it was cool. Everybody thought it was funny, and it was everything like that. Now, by no shape, form, or fashion, because, you know, he's a Philly Reekin. He's not, trust me, he's not racist. He's a Philly Reekin. If you know anything about Philly Reekins, come on. He's nowhere near racist. But he was, he's always flipping the mouth and saying things because he's trying to take the pressure off Danny, so he's putting attention on him. And he should have been checked a long time ago about his mouth. And then he finally said something because, remember, and, and to, like, to me, like what he said, when he, it, it was when he called Keith Thurman the B word, the B N. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The B ass in. That's what he, when he, that's street stuff right there. And that's what he got mad. But I, like, I'm with you. The whole time he was doing it, I didn't see Lou DeBella, nobody running to get that mic from him or telling him to say, I didn't see nobody doing any of that. That's what I'm saying to you. So that, that just as much to so, blame. Oh, yes. But, 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 but my thing is, don't just take me to the Keith Thurman situation. I, we, we can go back. We, you know what I'm saying? We can go back. So when, like I said, when, when he was going to, when Angel, when Eric Morales, when he was talking crap to Eric Morales, when Robert the Ghost Guerrero, when he was, you know, calling his dad, you know, or the racial slur, you would call him Mexican. I mean, it, dude, it was wild. Angel has always been like that. It's just that he crossed the line because this was the fight that was going to be on national TV, channel two, and not regular, you know, cable TV. And they were like, whoa, 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 we can't have that. Well, it was too late. He uh, you are already let he been Angel Angel Garcia been was going too far. And I said this a while back. He been the problem was they never said nothing, and that was the monster they created. So let's talk a bit now about Showtime and HBO while we're at it. Where is HBO Ooh. going and where's Showtime going? HBO, I think, is headed in the right direction. They're looking at the lot the lower weight classes, which there, there's some very good fights at that lower weight class. Okay. And they seem to be trying to make a nice little mini tournament at the 160 pound division. They, you know, you got Danny, you got Daniel Jacobs fighting over there on their channel. Uh, Demetrius Bubu Andrade, who's moved up in weight, he's fighting now on the channel. Mm -hmm. So you you got more fights at 160 now that you can kind of think about. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Jacobs, Charlo, uh, 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 Andrade, you know, Golovkin, Carnelo. You can even have David Lemieux fight somebody or whatever the case may be. So Lemieux's you, you fighting Saunders to... December 16th. Yeah, right. He's fighting Saunders. But, I mean, win or lose, he, he would still be a good test for, like, a Charlo brother. Yep. Yeah. That, you, you know what I'm saying? He would be a good test for a Charlo brother. Even a Curtis Stevens would be a good test for a Charlo brother or something like that. So you got some moves you can make over there, HBO, with, with the fight. Um, also, I, I think... Um, uh, after that, because when it comes to the welterweight division, when it comes to the heavyweight division, well, for 147, 154, heavyweight, uh, oh, and the lightweight division, they are stacked in the lightweight division over there with fights. You got uh, Sullivan Barrera, you got uh, the, uh, uh, Bivol, you got, you know, Glava uh, uh, Alexander Glavazzi, Sergey Kovalev, uh, he's fighting Shabransky. Okay, so they, you know, Bondu Jack, they may, you know, Bondu Jack who want to get him. You got R2 a better be fighting for a title. So they got uh, something to work with and build on. And the question is now, let's see if they do right. Because they still got 8 million more viewers than Showtime. Showtime's just been putting on the better fights. But they still got 8 million more viewers. So let's see what they do with it. The, I mean, it's there for them now to, to actually do something. Um, and I, and I think another thing is you too is you, you still got Golden Boy over there, and you, you're not gonna have the top rank recycle fights that a lot of people used to just not like was the top rank recycle fights. So let's see what happens, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually, listen, I don't want to see uh, none of them Golden Boy top rank PBC HBO. I don't want to see none of them fail because it hurts boxing. What do you make of? Uh, I'm going to be nostalgic. Maybe I'm just a nostalgic and, and a retro. I like retro, but I remember maybe ten years ago when you'd look at the HBO when, when a fight assigned for HBO is a big thing. Being on HBO, you know, um, you'd look at the HBO the old branding and you'd have the da, 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 da. you knew that was that was boxing for us in the UK watching AB, HBO. That was a big thing. You knew it was a big fight. Yeah, you know, De La Hoya was on HBO. 10, 15 years ago, Delahoy, and then all the fighters that were signed at HBO, I think 
Lennox Lewis ended up being an HBO fighter. And you just go onto the website and you see all the different HBO fighters that were there. And it meant something being an HBO fighter. Um, do you think that's still the same today? Or do you think that's very much a retro idea and a retro way of look, thinking of things? I think today, depending on what division you in, it still means something. Okay. Because look at the heavyweight division. The heavyweight division is rocking with the talks of Joshua Wilder, but that's Showtime, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the welterweight division right now is rocking, but that's PBC, and Todd Rank is going to be making some noise with Terrence Crawford, but that's ESPN and Showtime. Right. But when you, when you look at the, 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 the uh, middleweight division, that's, that's all HBO. When you look at the lower flyweight division, that's also HBO. So I, I think it depends on what division you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it still means something because Daniel Jacobs has actually gotten more uh, attention for signing with HBO and his fight coming up with HBO than he ever did. And he ever did in a PBC fight, even when he fought Peter Quillen. So why do you think the big thing of Jacobs going to match room is? What do you think that's all about? Uh, I think that's about him uh, uh, at 160 pounds. The top dogs is not with PBC. The top dogs is not with PBC. The top dogs is not on Showtime. The top dogs is if you want to make money, the top dogs is HBO. And one of the biggest mistakes I felt that um, Quill that um, Jacobs made was after the Peter Quillen fight, he regressed and he fought Sergio Morta too. So he never capitalized on that big win. That's why when he went to fight Golovkin, uh, you know, people was like, you know, it was hard for him to negotiate. He he had no negotiating power because your last fight was Sergio Morta too. This way now over there at HBO, um, he's going to fight. He's fighting this guy, uh, Aurelius. I hope I'm saying his name right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so he's fighting this guy, but we know eventually he may he may get the like they'll try to see if they can get the winner of Billy Joe Saunders and 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 uh, uh, David Lemieux. Okay, get that winner. Then maybe the third fight will be the winner of uh, okay. Canelo Alvarez. Stop and GDU. Stop, 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 stop. 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 Stop a second. I said at the top of the top of the show, I mentioned history serves us best if we research it. When Luis Ortiz signed with Eddie Hearn, we had all these great plans of what was going to happen with Luis Ortiz. What did Luis Ortiz end up fighting? Malik Scott. Yep. And, and, and Dave Allen. But here's the, but but see here's the difference. Here's the difference. Okay. You were trying to keep Luis Ortiz away from Anthony Joshua. You're not trying to keep. Well, even if that was the case, there were better guys he could have fought than Dave Allen and Malik Scott. Let's be honest. Oh, listen, if you're, if you're one this, of the best promoters in the world. Oh, yeah, I've said this several times. I said, listen, Eddie Hearns devalued the hell out of Lewis Ortiz because and the biggest mistake Lewis Ortiz made was leaving Golden Boy. Mm -hmm. Because with Golden Boy, he was fighting. He fought. He he had he he was uh he was the interim champion. Then Golden Boy stuck with him from the first PED situation. Like, look at what's being like. Look at how Ortiz is being handled in this PED situation. Then look at how he was handled with the with the one with Golden Boy. People actually don't even re re really even remember the Golden Boy one as much, and how you know, because they know how to contain things a little bit better, right? So, but that was to keep him away from Anthony Joshua. You're not trying to keep Jack was away from nobody, and then too. I think Eddie Hearns, uh, uh, he, he's trying to tap into that American market. Um, you got Daniel Jacobs, and uh, you know you got uh, you got uh, Anthony Joshua. He needs another star because we we haven't seen Kell Brooks, so he needs to try to make another star. And Jacobs is pretty known. Uh, Jacobs is 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 still kind of looked at with some type of aspiration because of the way he performed against Gennady Golovkin. He was like, he was the first dude to stop that knockout streak. Okay. And he, he, in most cases, most people believe they felt like he won. So, um, I'm not, I do agree with you. Time will tell if, if it was the right choice for him going with Eddie Hearns, but then you guys too, Eddie Hearns and Al Heyman are, you know, they, they, they know each other because Al Heyman is the advisor for a couple of uh, Eddie Hearns fight. Although I think Carl Frampton left, they called for him to leave Eddie Hearns? Yeah, no, he wasn't with Eddie Hearns. He was with um, 
Barry McGuigan, now he's gone to Frank Warren. Okay, Frank Warren, okay. All right, all right, all right. But yeah, Eddie Hearns and uh, Al Heyman are, you know, they're pretty tight. Not tight, but they, you know, I think I think Al is more comfortable dealing with Hearns than he is dealing with like a, a Kathy Duve or Oscar De La Hoya. The Bella uh, and the Hearns spat basically said that Hearns is not coming to America and running no America. He's not he's not coming and dominating America because he's a public schoolboy. We don't want that over here. What do you think about that? I think the Bella need to get off of that. That's what I think. Why you say that? Boxing is because boxing, uh, boxing is big enough uh, uh, to where he can come over. He he can, he should be able to come over here, and because of the because of the struggling, I don't want to say struggling American market. I just think that I I, I don't see a problem with A. Hearns coming over here and trying to shake things up. I think that adds interest to boxing. Even here in the U.S., it adds interest to it. So is I don't have a problem with. So is is Hearn the savior for American boxing then? No, he's not the savior for American boxing. I just think he can add some interest to it. Okay. When do you think? When do you think we'll get the next crossover fight between HBO and Showtime? I don't think we will. I don't think we will. I think it'll be a long, long time because there's nobody at HBO that you can have that's over at Showtime that you can think of a crossover fight that's worth all of the time and money that they'll put into to have. So that's going to be hard. That's going to be exceptionally hard. You know, so if Top Rank was still there, if Top Rank was still there, you could say Spence and Crawford. But, you know, they're at the ESPN. Wow. So there's nobody, you, you, you don't see there's nobody. Well, who today? I mean, we had then, was, which was Tyson and Lewis, HBO and right. Showtime. That was amazing, that event. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, you know, Jimmy Lennon Jr. and Michael Buffer on the same bill on the same night. And I think that, well, was that the first time that they ever collabed like that? I think it might have been, yeah. And you had the HBO and the Showtime uh, commentators all on one night. That's amazing. Right. Yeah, it was. It was. Mm. And it was a it was a spectacle of a fight. It was. Was it do you think it was I think was it more about the, the fighters or was it about the the the, the uh, bringing together of two networks? I think then it was more about the fighters. Pacquiao and Floyd was more about bringing the two networks together. Oh yeah, you got Pacquiao and Floyd, of course, yeah. Right, so that was more about the two networks coming together. But back then, it was more about the fighters. Hmm. Hold on, I'm, I I'm, think I'm, that's I'm, the fight that kind of made. I think that's the fight where people kind of started accepting Lennox Lewis over here in the U.S. You know that that the him and that Evander Holyfield. I think the first fight with Evander Holyfield when he got robbed, a lot of people started kind of. Feeling, you know, thought kind of wanted to accept Lynx Lewis because they kind of felt like he did get robbed in that first fight. I've got some questions coming through on Twitter now. Quite a few people. Um, um, it, uh, the boxing madman asks the question: Is Tyson Fury still the linear linear champion even two years since the last fight? Has it been two years? Quite possibly, could be. Because if it's still under that two-year time frame, Tyson Fury is still the linear, the linear champion. Okay. Did somebody ask a question here? Uh, yeah, if, if it's under two years, then fine. The other question is, uh, no, then somebody says, I hope Stavern is durable so he can go to points win, uh, to go to points again. In my opinion, Squad is going to win comfortably, though. Then somebody else says, hey, Ingram, does the boxing board ch charge – more money for officials on bigger shows than small halls. I don't know that. Maybe somebody in the room will be able to answer that question. Yeah, I don't know that one either. That's a good one. Um, I'm I would another, imagine so. I'm going to go back and ask the question about people still. Um, some people get very angry when 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 you tell them that Huey Fury outboxed Joseph Parker. What are your thoughts on that? <sighs> <laughs> You know what, Ingram, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this, right? Mm -hmm. 
the fight, everything I needed to know about that fight came at the end. When they announced those, <laughs> no, no, seriously. I'm, gonna, no, this is not, I'm not being funny. Check this out. When they announced the scorecards, right? Yeah. Everyone <laughs> was ready to hear Huggy Fury. Huggy Fury. Huggy Fury. Right, Huggy. Huggy Fury. Everybody ready to hear Huggy Fury. <laughs> okay. Right? And when Joseph Parker name was announced, I'll never forget when he was holding up the belt and somebody from the Fury team snatched the belt out of his head. <laughs> oh my God. I've never seen that like that in my life. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> but uh, I actually felt, I'll be honest with you, I said this, I said, I think Hugh Fury paid the price for his cousin, Tyson Fury. Peter wouldn't have now, it. I, he wouldn't have it. Huh? But I said, you know, I think you're paying for your cousin's performance, your, your, your nephew's performances, and what your nephew has been saying. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. And that's, that's my honest opinion on that. I think he paid the price for Huggy Fury. Huggy Fury paid the price because of Tyson. Okay, I'm going to close on this subject, and it's to do with a man by the name of Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson has oh, fought Phil yeah. Porter, and he's fought. Um, his, his last fight was against uh, Breedis Prescott, which he won as well. He lost against. Uh, well, it was a majority decision against uh, Sean Porter, and about his fifteenth fight, I think he took on Sean Porter, or tenth fight for Sean Porter. Now, um, Ray Robinson, a very colourful character, said it live on BWT and Sports, he beat the shit out of Danny Garcia in sparring. And he yeah, thinks, I heard that. What do you think? I of, heard what, that. What do you think of this guy, Ray Robinson, out of Philly? Uh, uh, man, you know what? You have a lot of guys that, uh, like Ray Robinson, even um, oh man, what's the guy's name? Kid from Philadelphia. Um, he got shot in the hand. Farmer. 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 You got a lot of these guys coming up that I think a lot of these boys better be watching out for. These are some good. These these are some hungry and you know fairly good fighters. Okay, they just they're just foaming at the mouth for an opportunity to be seen and show what they can do. Mm -hmm. We'll see. You know, he said that uh, uh, he said he, he beat Danny Garcia. He beat the crap out of him in the amateurs. Uh, he, whether it's true or not, it's on YouTube. So Danny's going to respond. People are going to see it. And it gets his name out there, whether it's true or not. It gets his name out there. Right. And I, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I also believe he's actually ranked by the WBC. I think he's in their top 15. Um, yeah, he's number 13. So uh He's trying to get into the mix, and I don't have a problem with somebody. If, if he wants to get into the mix, I don't have a problem with him doing what he's doing if he's trying to get in the mix. Uh oh. I've got some stuff here you got to hear. I can't believe. I can't believe what I'm reading here. Oh, dear. Hennessy Sports. So Tackham didn't go 10 rounds. Joshua took him 10 rounds to appease the fans. There's a difference. Give the fans, give the fans their money's worth. Hmm. If that's his opinion. That's that's Hennessy Sports. If that's his opinion, I don't think. Um, no, I, I don't think. Why I don't think Joshua carried him ten rounds. Okay, now let's, yeah, attack okay. him. Yeah. Now somebody says, did Eddie Hearn tell Joshua before the fight, "Hey AJ, carry Tackham for a few good few rounds because if you K O him early, paying fans won't be happy." Why wouldn't they be happy? You to K O him. You knocked him out flat on flat flat on his butt. So I don't see why they wouldn't. I, uh, do, do you think they were more? Which one you think they were more happy with the 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 bullshit stoppage we got or him knocking him flat out? Hmm. So 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 that so your thoughts on um, Joshua carrying um, Tackham? You don't believe he was carrying him? 
No, I don't believe he was carrying Tackum. Tackum, I don't believe he was carrying him because if you watch that fight, I mean, uh, if you watch that fight, in no shape, form, or fashion did it look like he was carrying him. Joshua was throwing some blows. He wasn't easing up. He was throwing some blows. Um, and, of course, Tackum was, was fighting. Like, I don't it's, – it's hard for me to actually uh, – uh, uh, and this is me. It's hard for me to actually accept another fighter is carrying another fighter in a highly competitive fight where the other guy has the potential to, to actually hit you and knock you out and hurt you real bad. Like, Tackum isn't the kind of dude that needs you to carry him. He can carry himself. So, you know, but I mean, if, if, if Hennessy, that's how Hennessy feels. Well, you know what? Let me ask Hennessy this. What did he see to make him feel that Joshua carried him 10 rounds? I think that's, I, I think that's an important question there. I don't know. You tell me. December the 9th, uh, it's been announced. World title double. Lisa, Lee Shelby is back. Uh, James DeGale is back. Down to Dubois fights and Anthony Yar fights. December 9th. The boys are back in town, December 9th, Box Nation. Your thoughts? Ooh, James DeGale? December 9th. I, I can't wait to see James DeGale's sister. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> haven't seen, haven't seen none that fine in a long time on TV. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, you know what? Who's his opponent? Who's James DeGale's opponent? I don't know, but I said before he needs he needs a new trainer to be honest, because he, he he's reached a level I don't think he's improving. Um, I don't think he I don't think he's uh he's, I don't think he's improving as a fighter now. I think he's reached a certain level and his defense is shocking. His defense is shocking. I think, and also he gasses a lot, man. I think after the he he's good, like he he's a front runner. He's good the first six rounds, but the last six rounds, man, he, 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 he man, he has like, a chance to jump on like, him in the last like six rounds. He's, he's like Billy Joe Saunders, isn't he? Yeah, the first six, yeah, first six rounds, man, he's a thoroughbred. He's, 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 he's a front runner, but he's not a, he, he's not a finisher. And that, that's the reason why, like, when he fought um, Bandu Jack, I told everybody, man, I, 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 I actually picked Jack to win. I said, because the thing about James Gale, he lets you back in the fight. He lets you back in the fight. He'll let you back in that fight, man. So, Shelby okay. is fighting. Who is Shelby fighting? I don't know who Shelby's fighting. I know Selby's fighting, but I don't know about Shelby. How do you spell his name, man? S E L B Y. Okay. Who is S E L B Y fighting? Selby. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know who's fighting. Uh, somebody here, there's always some smart ass in the room. Every There's always a smart ass in the room that, that always wants proof or evidence and can't search for facts. It says, hey, BWM, why do you think so? Is there any video that shows a feud between AJ and Eddie Hearn? Is there any video that proves this, bro? People are so dumb and stupid out there. You don't need to have evidence. Sometimes some things are clipped behind closed doors for PR and marketing purposes. You just have to read between the lines. Mm. Your thoughts, bro, um, Bo? <laughs> um, I think a lot of times this is like uh, Pacquiao and even Bob Barrett. I think a lot of times when people see something, uh, when they see something live, it's hard for them to believe that there's something different going on behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. that's just that's just life in general you know what i mean like it's hard it's hard for us to believe our heroes is having issues yeah exactly and and you know what's funny people keep asking me i keep saying to me where's your evidence where's your proof what do you, don't these idiots understand that what they think i just sit behind a keyboard and type buttons or push buttons all day long <laughs> absolute idiots and and even if i provoke if, even if i provide evidence what why would i provide evidence to you who are you to provide evidence to you know, I've broken down something. I've given a logical reason as to why I think X or Y or Z. It's only a matter of time, isn't it? I mean, really, is Eddie Hearn or Joshua going to say, yeah, we've had a feud and we just we disagree on contractual issues or, you know, I want to go my separate ways. Really? Are they going to come out and talk that shit? Who does that? Yeah, yeah that's 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 actually uh, when you think about it, uh, you don't shit? find things. Pretty, yeah, certain things you don't find out till it's over. Like, for example, um, and, you know, to your point. 
How many times have you seen a married couple look normal, look fine, and then a month later they're divorced? <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, hold on. Do you remember when I said Fury should drop the belts? Remember I yes. said it? Right. I said it after I spoke to Tyson Fury. Uh, and I'd be able to consider him dropping, uh, stripping him of the title because he was going to fight Klitschko in a rematch. And I said, drop the belts. Oh, where's your proof that uh, Tyson Fury should drop the belts? Man, he should defend all his belts. They've worked so hard to get them belts. I said, he's got a choice. He dropped them belts or they get taken from him. What happened? They got taken from him. Right. So where, where are we now? Yeah. Matter of fact, the first time they got taken from him was the IBF. That's what I'm saying to you. I also said Tyson Fury, 2017, the comeback. I said he's not going to get an open door to welcome him back to boxing. Don't be surprised if he's shut out of boxing in 2017. What happened? Did he come back? No, they put, you know what? They, they kept, the British boy kept pushing his, his appointment date back. Did I not say it was going to happen? Yeah, you did. Matter of fact, they just recently pushed it back to 2018, if I'm not mistaken. February 2018 is the next meeting with them. So what did I say? Has it not happened? No, you said it. You said it? But see, you got to understand, oh, Ingram, sometimes, like, and I had to say this, like, sometimes, man, I'll talk to a, a, a fighter yeah. or a trainer right. or a promoter off, off, just a regular conversation Me, we're having oh, on, on my phone. It's us yeah. talking. Yes. And I can't tell, I, I can't always tell you guys what we talk about. You exactly. Know? That's, you know? that's the way it goes. Now, let me give another example of something. Um, the thing about Prince, James Prince signing with Stiverne. I knew that the Sunday that he met with, with, with James Prince as friends, mm. they were meeting and talking. Okay. Now, it was reported by a certain reputable um, boxing forum that doesn't do their research because when they're reporting information, I'm looking at evidence in my, in my hand, right? So I'm looking at particular documents that are saying opposite to what they're saying. So they say, oh, well, you know, Stavern hired Prince because um, he wants to get the Wilder fight. Mm. But, but we knew, because we did the interview the week beforehand, that was not the reason. Yeah. So we tell you the story a week before it happens, and then afterwards it comes out something else. Or you hear out, stavern has been banned because he, uh, he, he, he was done with PEDs. And then you go and talk to the source. Some source says, no, it wasn't PEDs. It was a monster drink. It was a monster ah, drink, yeah. The people that understand that all these boxing for a lot of these boxing forums are run, can be run by people who run, who ha have agendas behind them. Who is the sources? Who are the people behind these big boxing forums that we read all our information, report our information of? Who are behind these people? If you're a real journalist, you should do your research and find out, hold a second, you're reporting. Okay, for example, if you say, I don't know, if you know that McDonald's are the people that are are behind the the killing of the kids at your where your kids go to primary school, that they 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 sponsored the the killer that killed people in in your primary school in the primary school you went to, would you then be a supporter of McDonald's? No, you'd be a fool if you still support them. Right, so, my, so that's my point. So, so you, you, while you're busy reporting, a lot of these people reporting off boxing forums, did they ask the question, who are the people behind those boxing forums? Who are they important? Who are they uh, sponsored by? Who are they uh, funded by? Whose promotion or whose promotional banner are they being prote protected by or being used by? Just because something's out in the front and it's been advertised and promoted very well, does it mean it's number one? Nobody asks the questions about that. They just say, oh, well, this is the information we get. That makes it true. At least we try to interview the people face to face. You can see their face and you can hear what they're saying. That's true. That's true. Like, I'm, a, I'm trying to, um, I'm waiting to hear back from them. But, um, you know, I talked to... Uh, Stephen Breadman, because I'm going to talk to him about this the East Day Smith fight get, they get, they get coming up. So I'm going to interview Stephen Breadman, you know? Yeah, so um, we're just going to we're gonna come to an end now. Before we end, I had a talk with Chris Mason last night. He says he's going to try and get Joe Kazaki in the room uh, on, on the show for us. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah, I heard, man. I'm jealous, man. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. 
But before we do that, I think I want to have a legendary night, and I think I'm going to bring Julian Jackson back in the room. So I think that'll be a good night oh, wow. for, for boxing. Yeah, let fans. me know. Let me know. I, oh my good Julian Jackson. We need to bring him back. His, in the nickname, room. his nickname was the Hawk too. You know that, right? Yeah, the Hawk. So we need to bring the Hawk back in the room. I think he would have loved that. The last time I had a conversation with him was about a couple of years back, and he was talking about promoters and and uh, fighters with with winning records and that you know because you can punch hard it don't mean shit and he would know because he's a big puncher he was a big puncher legendary big puncher for that so i think we might have a legendary night with julius jack julian jackson so i'm gonna give him a call and see if we can bring him on the show and, and do that man let me know would that be good would you like that heck yeah julian jackson the hawk <laughs> i'm gonna ask him man i'm saying yo man how can we ain't knock sugar right here the hell out no i'm just playing well, we did, we did the story of the Sugar Ray. He, t he told me that Sugar Ray Leonard, the, uh, Don King was at a press conference with Julian Jackson. And the story is that um, Don King had the, was on the phone to Sugar Ray Leonard after I think that Jackson knocked out uh, Norris and Sugar Ray Leonard flat out refused to fight Julian Jackson. Flat out said, I don't want any piece of him. That's oh, what Sugar Ray Leonard said. Yeah. Like you, I've got the interview. I'll, I'll send you the interview. You can listen to it yourself. I'm going to have to check that out, man. Julian Jackson. Check it out. Bayloric TV. Julian Jackson. Two interviews we did with him. One was a live interview. And one was a um, just the first time I met him. So, yeah, I'm going to try and get that interview back and get him in the room again. So, yeah, I'm going to work on that. Right. I think that's it. Bo, do you have something to say before we close? Your This is your Jerry Springer moment. Yes. All you guys out there, hit like on the video. Go to Truth and Facts About Boxing. Boxing. Subscribe. Uh, uh, shout out. Uh, mad props to my man Ingram Jones. Uh, doing it a second time. This is probably, this, you know, it's funny. This is probably the most we did talk this month, bro. <laughs> it is. It is. But it has to be done. I think I think it's about it's about a flushing of the system. And then just keep flushing. Yeah. The system. Yeah. So I, shout I out to, to my man. I've, got, I've just got to detox all that crap that comes out from the fanboyism. And they're trying, it's like a, it's like a cancer. They're trying to put into your system to tell you that you must follow this. Obey. You must follow. You must listen. Do not question anything. That sort of crap. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm glad. I never got a chance to ask you, what did you think when Anthony Joshua first said that the Wilder fight, you know, might, could be 2019 or 2020? What did you think of that? He's a man in control of his career. That's what I thought. And I think that he, he is, um, I think he's got other things lined up. So the further he puts it back and the far, the more he disassociates himself with Wilder, um, there may be some other reasons behind the scenes that he can't reveal as to why he's saying, well, let's not have the Wilder fight let now. Let's, he's being diplomatic. Why is he, our question is, why is he being diplomatic? Why is he being diplomatic? Okay. I mean, okay. Right. So he said, oh, well, he duck, he's ducking Wilder. Hold on. Didn't he just fight Klitschko? Right. Well, that's just like people talking about some Wilder's ducking Dylan White and he's trying to fight Ortiz. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so, so there's no ducking. There's something more to it than just there may be more reasons. Now, one of those reasons potentially could be Wilder testing. I don't know. Uh oh, here you go. You, you stepping in that dangerous territory, baby. They're going to they come for your head, man. They're going to come for your head. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just saying it could be that. It could be you're fighting for the WBC title. So if you're fighting for the WBC title, you're going to do WBC testing, right? That's true. Okay. I'm well, done. the WBA got a program too, I thought. I thought the WBA also had a program. But the, the WBA, who are the WBA in bed with? Are the WBA in bed with his promoter? I don't know. I'm just asking. Does the <laughs> WBC have a good relationship with her? I don't know. I'm asking a question. <laughs> I'm only asking a question. I'm not saying that Hearn is in bed with WBA. I'm not saying Hearn's not in bed with WBC. I'm just saying. What is it? Why are they so mm. fast to quick, quickly throw White, White in with, with Wilder and not so quick to throw Joshua in with Wilder? Mm. Okay. All right, man. We go. <laughs> Gotta love my man Ingram, man. But, uh, uh, shout uh, out to you, said man. At the press, AJ is doing Vada, but like you say, anything is possible. I'm doing Vada too. 
I'm do, you know I'm doing Vada at the moment. What's Vada? What Vada are you doing? I don't know. I'm just doing Vada. Oh, you saying that he, he can say that? <laughs> yeah, he can say what the hell he wants. Pinocchio can say what he wants. But once you're Pinocchio, you're Pinocchio, innit? Remember, remember, this is the same guy. Remember, and boxing fans, remember, this is the same guy that knew what the purse bids were and how much the was going to get before the purse bids were even announced. Mm. Well, hey, man. This is the same guy. I hope, I, 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 hope I truly hope. AJ is I, I I I I don't want him to be dirty man. This is the same guy that I, said I, he was on the phone to Bob Arum and Bob Arum said I didn't get no call from Eddie Hurt. Well, I, I I hope I'm praying to God because the two fights we want to see are the two fighters, and so far they've been clean. So I I truly hope, I truly truly hope that that's not the case. I'm just saying. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. What's the stumbling? Okay, so what, what is the stumbling block? What's what, what, why what? the delay? What, what's the delay? Why is the reason the delay? Get to the facts. What's the delay? What's the reason? Is it money? Is it networks? Probably want to... Hold on. Showtime. Yeah. Um, they're both on Showtime, right? Right, but they they probably trying to build this fight more. Build? How are they going to build the fight? Build it with what? Fighting who? Hey man, have him fight. Have him fight. I said have him fight. Maybe have him fight Dylan White in the UK. And then who does Joshua and have, fight? Uh, Joshua can fight whoever. It doesn't matter you who Joshua. Can fight whoever you want. Then Joshua should fight Stavern then. If you want to build a fight, Joshua should fight Stavern. After all, if, you, wait, wait, if you're going to go down those roads, those paths, then Joshua should After fight Stavern. And then and then and then, and then uh, White should fight Wilder. If you want to go down those roads. So was uh, the Vern should fight Joshua after uh, Wilder? Yes. Okay. And they can have this as a double header in the UK. Yes. And and then then after that they fight each other. Yes. Okay. Will that happen? I don't. I, I don't think so. <laughs> now, 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 now you're gonna try and get. Now you're gonna try and get Joshua. Remember the prediction I made. I said to people. That they're gonna try and get Tyson Fury to fight Joshua on his comeback. They are. They're gonna try and do that. I don't know. Tyson Fury's been out. I don't the know ring. Tyson, Fury. Tyson Fury's been out the ring as long as Klitschko's been out the ring, right? Maybe, yeah, right. Yeah, his last fight was Klitschko, so he's been out longer than Klitschko. Vlad just fought. And they're calling out. I want Ty Tyson Fury next. I want Ty. You want Ty? You want Tyson Fury? Yeah, let's have Tyson Fury. Why are you in a rush to fight Tyson Fury now? Guy ain't been fighting for, for two years. The guy He's is over two way years. overweight. Yeah, almost two, more than two years. The guy is overweight. And suddenly, he's got his, his license lifted so the fight can happen. Man, you stepping into dangerous territory there, Ingram. I'm asking but, the question. I, listen, I'm but, I, but I, I'm trying to ask a question. I am not. But they're very. In, but those are very interesting questions, and, and if it goes down that way, it's gonna look real. Oof. I Let said in 2000. I told you this year. Go back and look at the comeback of Tyson Fury. The videos I've done. I said one of the things I warned Tyson: don't step back in in 2018 trying to fight Joshua. Suddenly, you're calling that Tyson Fury. Isn't that odd? You're putting it in the minds of the British public. This guy's ducking me. Look, I fought Klitschko. I just fought Tackham. Hey, I'm ready. I've called that Tyson Fury. I'm not ducking him. Here I am. But it's okay. You've been active. Fury's not been doing anything for two years. He's in no sort of shape. Come on. I just don't know if Tyson Fury's coming back. That's my only thing. Even if he is coming back, it's going to take a year at least for him to get himself in. Are they going to wait until two? Okay. In that case, then, if anybody should be waiting to 2019 to fight, it's Tyson Fury, uh, Tyson Fury, uh, Joshua. Why? Because Tyson Fury hasn't fought for so long. So he should be excused and should be allowed three or four fights to get himself in, the, in position to fight. In the time right. being, Joshua should fight Wilder. Because Wilder's been consistently fighting, more or less, more than Tyson has. Josh has been fighting, 
That's a consistent fight. That's consistency. Both mm. guys get enough time to prepare for a proper fight. Not two or three weeks notice or nine days notice or based on somebody's pull out. Make the day, mm. make the fight happen. And by the time okay, that fight okay. by the time that fight okay. happened, Tyson would have come okay, back. Okay, so what if they say Okay, so let me ask you this. What if they say, all right, check this out. Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, May 2018. Is that not enough time for him to get ready? No. Absolutely not. No way. A man ain't fought for two years. A man hasn't fought for two years, completely overweight. We don't know what state of, state of mind he's got. We don't know what demons he's carrying. We don't know if, if he has been messing around with any substances. We don't know anything about Tyson Fury. We don't even know if we'll ever get Tyson Fury that beat Vladimir Klitschko. We don't even know if we'll ever get that version of him again. Do we? Who knows? Who Can he get back to that stage again? You can say you want about Muhammad Ali. You can say you want, oh, well, Muhammad Ali was in prison and stuff. We know that when Muhammad Ali was in prison, he wasn't a drug taker, was he? He wasn't supposedly sniffing coke or whatever it was, was he? If that was the hmm. case about Tyson. And he certainly wasn't, he didn't have the bare belly and, 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 and looked so grossly out of shape, did he, Ali? No, nah, Tyson blew up after that Klitschko fight. He blew up this big time. This is what I'm saying to you. We don't know what mental demons Tyson's carrying after the Klitschko fight. Well, yeah, what sure. Don't have him fight then. That's what don't I'm saying. Don't have him fight and then just That's move on to saying. the... Uh... That's what I'm saying, you see, but British fans, British fans will listen to what... Oh, what see this is where who controls the media controls the mind this is what thing i listen to me just like i said about dillian white fight dillian do not fight anti joshua you're not ready you're not ready you're not fit you're injured do not take that fight and uh oh, I just it's just come through here uh bring it back says also hearn said i can get tyson his license back there's a corrupt statement right there he, so, said that? Uh, I um bring it back. He said in a, some interview. I haven't listened to any of the interviews. If that is the case, that Hearn is now. I, I don't know if that is the reported case that Hearn said he can get Tyson his, his, his license back. That does not bring some question marks around. Oh, definitely, because you're 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 bringing back. But you got to also understand, there's a lot of people that felt like. And I think I saw something where some, uh, uh, I think it was, I think it was Larry Holmes that said Tyson Fury uh, that Joshua needs to be Tyson Fury to prove he's the real champ or something. I heard somebody say something. Like that. Of course it is. You know, you, to be the man, you got to beat the man, and he beat the man. He oh beat the God, here we go with that. Oh, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Okay, so who was the man in the light heavyweight division? Andre Ward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or he was. But I'm telling you now, if Fury is dumb enough to take the fight, and I say dumb enough, because I, I you know, hopefully I'll get an opportunity to talk to him. Oh, well, I'm gonna make a way to go and talk to him. I, I saw Peter Fury recently, very recently. We sat down and we had a a very good chat um, off the camera. And um, look, you don't believe anything Tyson Fury says. I can tell you that. And don't believe half the thing he says. If he says he's coming back and having three fights next year, then uh, don't believe a word he says. Just trust me on that. Don't, trust, don't believe a word he says. Unless it's in contract and it's written and there's dates and he's actually in training and he's got a specific date and you can see it and he's advertised. But even then, still don't even believe that because we've seen the Klitschko fight, that was advertised. He did all the pre-fight for it and all the press conference and the fight never happened. So until the guy is in the ring, don't listen to anything else. Until the guy's back in the ring. So I hope and I pray this is not a setup for Tyson Fury 2018. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll see, man. We'll see. I'm, I'm telling I'm you. I'm telling you if, now. If, wait, if, if all if of a sudden I see a... I want somebody to show me that article. Show me. I, I need to see that article Eddie Hearn said that, man. It's a, I, it's I can get his life is back. I'm saying, I haven't seen any of the interviews. I'm telling you now, if Hearn says we can make Fury um, Joshua for 2018 in, you know, uh, at Wembley 2018 in the summer, if he says those words or anything around those words or anything uh, kind of around those words, 
I can tell you now that Tyson Fury's been set up. There is no way, no way in hell he's ready for 2018 summer. No way. No, he's not. He, he, he's well, he's, not, he's, we know not. he's not ready. He is not ready. He needs at least three fights. So give me Tyson Fury at the end of 2018. No, I said he needs at least two fights. Joshua no, should be three, the third fight. Three, but... three fights. Three, three fights. Mm. And I think it depends on how you look. Three fights. And at the end of 2018, then let him fight Joshua. Then let him fight Joshua. But until that time, if you want to have a summer fight, have a summer fight at Wembley with Deontay Wilder next summer. And at the end of 2018, then fight Tyson Fury. Come on. You fight them two guys. Who else in the division do you really need to be fighting? Joseph Parker? Yeah. That's true. So I say summer 2018, Parker. Because I think there's already a contract signed in place for Parker to fight Joshua. That's mm. why they don't want to fight Wilder because there's a Parker fight in place. So Parker fights Joshua 2018 for WBO for the for WBO, WB, um, WBA, IBO championship in the summer. Parker, uh, Joshua. That fight happens. And at the end of 2018, mid to end of 2018, they'll look to fight either Tyson Fury. They'll look to fight Tyson Fury. And if they beat Tyson Fury, then in 2019, they could possibly look to fight Wilder. So the 2019 prediction would make sense. If there's already Parker fight in the contract. Mm. Ooh, wee, you dropping some bombs, man. Come on, talk to me. You dropping bombs, man. We're gonna talk off air, man. Remember, <laughs> remember I said to you, Bo, for us to know about the future, to have an idea to predict the future, we have to look into the past and see how things yeah. work. And they think it's the same sort of people thinking the same ways. These people plan, and they're not smart about their planning. They do the same shit all the time. They're going to promote a fight. So what do you do? Just go over Twitter now and start starting it up, stirring it up with Tyson Fury. Stop ducking me. Let's have a fight. Blah, 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 blah. Back and forth on Twitter. Fancy. Oh, Tyson Fury's going to come back and fight Joshua. And it's not like they haven't already had words. I'll leave it as that. Bye, man. It's not like they haven't had words. So I will leave it as that for you. I'm referring to Joshua and Tyson, but I will leave it as that. Mm. And I'm not talking about Twitter either. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're going to talk, man. So have you got anything to finally say about what's just come out there? No, nah, just, you know... Follow your boy right here, Truth and Facts, man. Follow us on Baylor TV. Shout out to my guys at The Movement, D-A-M-U-V. And, uh, man, we're going to be doing the show tonight. And uh, I, I'm going to talk to Ingram. I'm, I'm going to talk to Ingram because we're going uh, <laughs> to got a lot to talk about. I've got a guy here, cause I, I'm con I, I, I'm, I've got a conspiracy. Well, hold on. Did I did did what I say or did I not what I say come true? Has Tyson Fury fought in 2017? No. Did the belts get taken off Tyson Fury? Yes. Did Tyson Fury get stopped from boxing this year? Yes. Those are three things that have happened this year. Out of last year and this year. So come on. I read in the Sunday Times both had a phone chat, I think. You have to read the Times. They did have a conversation with one another. They did have a conversation with one another. I know. Yeah, I will leave it as that. They did have a conversation with one another. So I, I, again, I, I, it's not for my, it's not my business to get involved in shit like that. But they did talk to one another. Mm. And as much as I can say, it wasn't to invite one another over for a cup of tea. Let's put it this way. I and like that. I told you before, and I'll tell you again, Tyson Fury is back. When he was world heavyweight champion, he was bad for business in the UK. Do you not understand? It was bad for business because you can't have two heavyweight champions in the UK at the time. He was bad for business. Because Tyson was like, I want to fight Joshua now. And Joshua's team does not want that fight because it doesn't build brand Joshua. It's a problem. Get Tyson out of the way, which is what happened. 
Uh, you're saying Joshua and Fury had a conversation together. Not sure if that's true. I don't care what you think. I know what I know. I know what I know. And I know the people that were involved when that conversation happened. I know. And I, have to, I don't have to prove myself to you people. And I'm not doing it to get myself in trouble either, but I know. So we'll leave it as that. Those that know, know. Those that listen to the broadcast that know me, know what happened. Yeah. Do you understand? So, but um, I would not be surprised if we don't see Josie Parker and Fury uh, and, and Wilder uh, and Joshua fight in 2018. Um, that, that, that's a fight, I think, summer, spring or summer 2018. Ooh. So do you think by the end of uh, this next year, we'll have undisputed heavyweight champion? Well, that will only happen if two things one guy remains the, the guy gets the remains unbeaten and if joshua remains unbeaten then fine mm. is there is there any guarantee that he's going to remain unbeaten uh ingram i've been following you for years but recently the channel has become an aj bashing channel it's okay to critique but all i hear about aj's constant bashing no positives mate you're listening with your fanboy ears listen are, are you you are an example of a certain person i'm going to take to task and i'm going to finish here I'm not bashing. I'm just not. It's not a channel of fanboyism. It is what it is. AJ is a good fighter. I've said it over and over and over again. He's a good fighter. He is a good fighter. He is a good fighter. But if you want me to sit here and follow the same directive of what other commentators are saying, forget it. And if you don't like what I've got to say, it's unsubscribe to the channel. It's simple. I'm not begging for you to be subscribed to my channel. I'm not begging you, and I don't owe you anything. So if you don't like it, do the good thing and subscribe to your channel and subscribe to your channel. That's more to what you want to hear. You don't go to Asda and tell them that you like to have it to, to like, like what Tesco's has got. No, you go to Tesco's for Tesco's. You go to Asda for Asda. You go to Nike for Nike, you go to Reebok for Reebok. You don't tell Nike, I want Reebok on there. You don't go to Reebok and tell Nike, I want, you don't do it. They're two different brands that do what they do. So don't try and come onto my station and tell me how to run the brand. Don't, please don't tell me to do that. Then no, no, no more am I going to come and tell you how to run a brand. You know, I don't go to a, I don't go to a doctor and say to a doctor, oh, well, you know what? I've got my car and he's fixed it. I, I like to fix my car. Why can't you be a doctor and fix my car? No, a doctor does what he does and a mechanic does what he does. Right. So these people in boxing think for some reason that they have this this ownership, this sort of belief that they can just come in and tell you how to do what they're doing. So. If you think it's biased and you don't and you think I'm I, I'm balanced and not balanced, go elsewhere. Take your subscription and go elsewhere. But I'm not here. I'm not here. And and it's and it's not just AJ. It's any fighter I've 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 boosted, I've praised, and I and I've also criticised. I've boosted and I've praised Josh uh, uh, Fury, and I've also criticised him as well, openly to his face. So if you don't like it, like I said before, unsubscribe. And go to one of the other channels have got millions and millions of views and you can listen to the commentary that you like each and every week but please don't come in here trying to change the style that i have all right you don't write to sky you don't tell sky you don't complain to sky and send letters to sky and tell sky i don't like the way your commentary is so biased well no you wouldn't do that would you but you pay your 19 mm -hmm. 99 and 20 pounds to listen to be biased and say biasness about your fighter and say that your fighter is the best fighter since way before Lennox Lewis and the greatest heavyweight of all time, you'll listen to that and not call that biased. But when I call it for what it is, you don't like it. So it is what it is. If you don't like it, unsubscribe to the channel. Simple. Simple. You don't like it, unsubscribe. And if you don't like what I've got to say, I'm not begging you. I didn't, I didn't force your hand to subscribe to the channel. And I will keep on repeating this. If you don't like it, unsubscribe. Yeah, I'm not I'm not charging you for it. I'm not begging for some subscription. It'd be nice if you subscribed and it'd be nice if you could give me the opportunity to explain my opinion. But don't start making accusations of things that are not true. So I think uh it seems folks who love to critique don't like to be critiqued. Uh I will also continue to take you to task. I'm the first to stick my hand up when I get it wrong. And I'm the last to stick my hand up when I get it right. So there you go.
But you know what, Mohammed? If you think you can do it better, open up your channel and do it yourself. But you know, if you want to be, if you want to give constructive criticism, my friend, construct something first, and then we'll talk about it. But until you've constructed something, let's just leave it as it is. If you don't like it? Unsubscribe from the channel. Uh, Ingram, calm down. It's cool. You have a uh, listen. This isn't about having a fan base. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not understanding. No, they're this saying is, you have a you you have a loyal fan base. It doesn't matter about a loyal a fan base is great. It's not being politically correct. It's not about a fan base. It's about being honest. As mm -hmm. long as you're honest and you tell the truth, that's what it is. And I'm fed up of people, you know, uh, people saying I'm being aggressive. I'll calm down. No, it's because you guys don't like a person being emotional or telling the truth about how they feel. They don't like it. People expect you to sit back and take the abuse. Sit back and listen. No, I'm I'm writing. I'm I'm talking back, and I'm not just talking back on a base of me. I'm talking the base of other people, other YouTubers, other other uh, creative content uh, um, uh, content providers. And why am I doing this? Because I'm seeing so many content providers shutting their channels down and have been bullied and cyber and it was cyber uh, bullying for many years. Do you know how many people I've spoken to? Almost cancelled. Because they've shut their channels down because of the constant critique. Boxing fans are the most ungrateful people I've come across in the world. Most ungrateful. Most ungrateful. Do you know what I mean? And, and most finicky. Today, they're with you. Tomorrow, they're slagging you off. And everybody wants to tell you what to do and how to do it. But when you look at what they're doing, they ain't doing shit. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind people having an opinion. But don't tell me what I know when I'm sitting... I may be sitting there and having dinner with these people just because I don't post the pictures on it on Instagram or just because I'm not sharing a conversation with them, with you, doesn't mean that it's not happening. People have a life outside of uh, outside of YouTube. And um, it seems that, you know, it's because people have got access to me. If I just shut the chat, if I shut the chat section off and I just did these videos and just shut the, uh, the chat section off, I wouldn't have to deal with this. Uh, he says, being honest in giving 50-50 opinions on positives and negatives. However, I am sure your followers will concur with me. It has been 90% bashing AJ and rare praise. Are you an idiot or what? I've just talked about how great <laughs> AJ's been. Um, I've talked how great he's been promoted, how he should go self-promotion. You're an absolute idiot. Uh, and I have to call it as it is because an idiot is someone who has sense but not using it. I've spent a whole time promoting AJ, talking about what AJ's yeah, we doing. Talking, yeah, I'm we not was, riding uh, his dick, all right? I'm not yeah, going to ride his just, dick. Yeah, we was just talking about how he's promoting on everything, and we was talking about him, how they're doing a good job promoting him, how mate, he speaks well, he's a good diplomat. We was just talking about all that. Do yourself a favor, mate. Uh, Mohammed Ahmed, do yourself a favor. Go back, push the red button again on Sky pay per view. Sit down, get your dick out, and rub your dick, and have a look at AJ again. Go do oh that. Oh my god! <laughs> Go and do that, my friend, because you're the sort of people that are ruining the sport of boxing. There's people like you that are ruining the sport of boxing, and and people who've been honest and being balanced are having to be forced into this sort of. If you don't subscribe to being completely uh, a fanboy and having no balanced point of view, then you're a hater. If you don't like it, you can get lost. Honestly. Honestly, I just don't. And people say I get triggered by this. But I'm, not, I'm triggered because, guess what? I actually have a heart. I'm not soulless. I know other people who have been hurt and other channels have been hurt. And... Uh, the community, I keep, I keep, uh, I mean, I get mad, I forget the community, the, the Lions boxing community. Uh, Bo, give me a, give me a reminder, please. What did you say now? The, the LB, is it LB oh, LGBT? Yeah, yeah, big shout out to them and what they're doing while I'm at it. Big shout out to them. Keep on doing your work. Keep on representing, keep doing your work. I might not agree with everything you're saying, but I got a lot of love for you. I just thought I'd put that out there as well. LDBC, the YTBC, my movement, uh, uh, 2K Prodigy of Boxing, all of them out there, dude. Anybody out there doing your thing, man, you know what? Do your shout out, do your thing. Okay, so I'm sorry, but Ingram had stated AJ is good many times. AJ is good, but not God. We can't lie to you and tell him that he's the best ever and better than Lennox at, the, at this point in time, not saying he can't make it. I've been following you boxing since 19, 1986. I've been following boxing since 1986. 
Good for you, my friend. I'm glad you've been following boxing since 1986. That's irrelevant information to me. I'm not boxing. I never claimed to be boxing. So what the hell's that got to do with it? I've been following boxing long before 86. <laughs> exactly. Eddie Hearn's working all the channels today. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, it is what it is. You have a laugh and a joke, but um, I'm triggered. Like there, were, there was a couple of channels I can tell you now, really great channels. That um, going back, the Big Ragu. What a great channel that was. You remember the Big Ragu? I heard about that channel. It was a great channel, Big Ragu. There was a couple of girls that used to be uh, g girl channels. I'm not mentioning their names. Female channels. Okay. Big, big female channels. You know, they're getting really good viewership. And not because they, um, not because they were, um, not because they were good looking, but they actually knew boxing. They knew boxing. They could tell you historical facts about boxing that a lot of these cats don't know about. But because they were getting abusive and some of the guys on here were just rude and had no oh, yeah. class, no style, they abused those girls. And those girls no longer will, will be a part of boxing and the boxing community. We've lost a lot of good channels to the boxing community because of these trolls and these idiots. So, yeah. You get guys who get, you get, guys who get uh, trolls or flag them for no reason because they don't like their views. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, that's right. That's what this is the kind of these are the kind of snake this is the kind of snakes in the grass that I'm talking about. These are the kind of snakes in the grass which you've got to call them out for what they are. And they're snakes in the grass. They come out, they pop their heads up. And do you know when they pop their heads up? When there's a big fight yeah. around. So they decide to trigger you and start a conversation. Do you know Coach Sheldon Harris? Not sure. Go ahead. Tell me about him. CHM, he has a show. Coach Sheldon Harris, he talks boxing MMA. Yeah. And he says, like, how you going to explain that? That's one of his things, though. How you going to explain that? And uh, blood boxing. Yeah. Even Mr. Doc. I, I've seen these guys get blocked because of stuff like that right there. Yeah, well, you know what? It's lovely that you've been following me, but I'm going to take the, take the situation here. I've just blocked his ass. And do you know why I've blocked his ass? Is because, do you know what? I'm taking back a bit of self-worth because, do you know what? It's okay for people to run up and make their opinions and say what they've got to say. I give them people open opinions. But when you accuse me of things that are not true, I get rid of you because I can't be dealing with it. I want to have, an, I want to have a, a forum that people can come in and feel safe and have their opinions and say what they've got to say without being abused. See, and if I allow the abuse to happen to me, that means I'll allow it to happen to other people as well. But you know what's funny? Me, I have to bring the abuse back to them. Simple as. Go ahead. You know what's funny is mm -hmm. people probably watching this, mm -hmm. but remember when we first started out, we didn't agree on nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. So See, you yeah. couldn't agree on nothing in the beginning. <laughs> like the thing is, Bo, I have to take these things. I take these things more seriously now because there's a responsibility. There's a responsibility, right? right? And uh, for those guys that are coming up in box, coming up and they, they're not getting the views that they want to get or they're not getting the, uh, the, the respect they're getting, are listening to this and thinking, shit, yeah, I have had to deal with that. I wish he'd said that. So somebody's got to speak up on this shit. Somebody's got to speak up of it. And, and I'll block you straight. I don't, I'm not interested in trolls. Go to another channel. If you like the fandom and you want to listen to how Joshua's the greatest thing since life's break, go to another channel and listen to that. He's a good fighter. Yeah, I agree. I, I have to say that to people about Deontay Wilder sometimes. I tell people, listen, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and defend Wilder's resume or defend the way he fought. I'm not going to sit here and do that. I, that, that I'm not going to do that. You can't. And if that's what you want me to do, you got the wrong guy because I'm, I'm, I'm not – I don't defend any fighter. I'll defend an incorrect statement made about a fighter. But I'm not, he's a grown man. And if you're critiquing him, he's a grown man. I'm not going to cry for another grown man. I'm just not going to do that. I've had more accomplished fighters on the channel than 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 um than uh I've I, I, I've never had an interview with AJ. But that's because I've never gone to these press conferences. Because I don't go to these press conferences, it doesn't happen. But mm -hmm. I've had I've talked about more accomplished fighters than AJ on the channel. But you see, these people are looking for certain things, and so therefore, I'm not subscribing to it. I'm not getting involved with it. We have a responsibility to tell truth and speak truth. That's what it's about. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, just like we was talking about earlier, when I somebody got mad when I brought up race, but it's like that's the truth, though. What I'm talking about is the truth. You know. He says, "Um, yeah, he's been watching the Disney Channel since 1986, mm -hmm. and Bill Box is about right." So, yeah, I just want boxing fans to know 
or just not even boxing fans. I want just people to know that this channel isn't about getting views. And if it gets views, it's great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it's about telling the truth. One of the right. final point. Very, a very, very nice guy. Been following the channel for years. Said to me, why don't you do 15 to 20 minute interviews? I said, well, if I did that, that wouldn't be what our brand's about. We want to give you the in-depth interviews. Right. Um, Ingram, your version of truth is objective. No one has a monopoly or on, on objective on objectivity. No, they, they don't. They don't. But this is my opinion, and these are my thoughts. But I'm not being abusive with my thoughts. I'm not saying, or I'm not saying to. I'm not going to you and saying to you, for example, uh, you said this and you said that when you didn't say this and that. See that 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 is now. That's what I call muddy in the waters. Muddy in the waters. Uh, it's the former. It's YouTube. Sadly, you won't change it. I will do. Um, it, I'm not a troll, but there are some real shit channels. Benji Boxing is top of my shit list. I like the channel because you keep it working. How did Huey Fury qualify for WBO mandatory? What's that got to do with this conversation? Um, um, there, there's a reason Eddie won't, won't want Ingram to interview him again. Ingram smashed him with questions he didn't answer last time. Well, it is what it is. It, I, I, I'm not here to blow my own trumpet, but what I won't stand for is the abuse, the muddy and the waters, the agenda-based questions, the because I know where it comes from, and I know the damage it does. I know the damage it does. These, these idiots that come on the channel, and remember, these are paid trolls. These are people that are paid to destroy channels. Understand this understand this these are people i've seen people's channels taken down i've seen people's twitter pages taken down there's the agenda all right wow this is this is this is this is cruel shit this is real shit it's okay like i said remember i said to you before bo what's gonna i told you about what's gonna happen and we're yeah, almost there we're almost there bo we're almost there uh, i remember too we're almost there brother we're about a month away from it <laughs> and them trolls won't have I'll any go. listen i mean even the other the other day i was even quite tempted to just close off the chat channel altogether and just have no chat in the room and just let people and just let the guests come on the show and have their opinion and be done with it but the reason why i do it is so that fans and boxing boxing supporters can get to meet the, the fighters and get to ask their questions see so something that's good intention has got good intentions gets abused okay for every right. 10 people that have got good intentions and actually want to hear a good interview and want to hear ask questions there's always that one idiot that comes in that wants to cause a problem disrupt do you understand yeah i had, no i know exactly what you're saying i see them like i haven't been on as long as you mm -hmm. but not entering my um um, now that I'm entering my second year, I'm starting to get to see the more and more aggressive comments and the more and more, you know, the more and more aggressive challenges. And there's another thing I want to put out there, you know, that, and, I, and I'm going to, I'm talking to specific sort of people, certain people. They expect me to be a good little black boy and they know who I'm, they, they know, they know what I'm talking about and they know who they are. I'll be a good little black boy. And as long as I just say what you want me to say, I'll be fine. But as long as I get out of my box, then you're going to come here and try and pet me down. Take that shit off my channel. Get away from me. Get away from the channel. Get away completely off it. You, it's not happening. You didn't build this shit up, so you ain't going to bring this shit down. So you're going to take that for what it is. That has to be said because that's the mentality of some of the people that come in the room. Who's he? Who does he think he is talking like that? But as much as you say, who do I think I am saying what I'm saying? Who do you think you are coming into the room telling me what to do? On your show. Well, it's not my show. I, I've been fortunate to be, have a platform to talk from, and that's what it is. It's not my show. I have a platform to talk on the show. And you know, there are people now listening on this channel today that have no good intentions and look for every single way to get the channel blocked. I'm telling you, it is what it is.
and I don't, you know, very few people you can trust. But it's truth. You just have to speak your truth and be on with it. Right. That's what I said earlier. I said that's what I like about your show. I've seen literally. I've seen guys come on who I know are gonna say are controversial cat. You like, hey man, speak your truth, man. I'm like, okay. It is. So it is because I have somebody on my show. I might not agree with everything. There's some people you might have on the channel that may come on, and then after a while you may get to know and think, you know what? I don't think you're good for long term longevity of this channel. You might have been good for one or two shows, but longevity on the channel. It's not in the best interest of the public to keep you going on the channel. So some people may right. come on the channel and you may never see them again. Yeah, that's true. You understand? There are other people that come on the channel and they do one thing because it's their opportunity to promote themselves. As soon as they become, you know, big bollocks, then they don't contact the channel again. Is that because yep, of me? Yep, 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 <laughs> Is that because of me? No, that's nothing to do with me. I just, all I do is just try and give people an opportunity. Or let me rephrase that. I've been given an opportunity and because I've been given an opportunity to voice an opinion, I'm grateful because of that opportunity. So then I give other people that opportunity to do the same thing. I was given the grace to have the opportunity to speak. That's all. That's true. That's true. You did. That's, That's how we met. Cause, uh, Cause you actually reached out to a buddy of mine about my show. There you go. There you go. I remember that. I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm going to keep on going. So I think the YouTube community is a wonderful community. And I think that it's got some wonderful people, some very well, well, um, people who do really great work, who can tell you the historical facts about boxing. There are people there who can tell you the technical breakdowns, you know, that really talk real proper stuff, really proper stuff. Um, and because of that, you know, people don't want to hear that then there are people who get thousands and thousands of views and i've got a theory about that as well people get thousands and thousands and thousands of views and they're not talking anything con you know constructive they're not talking anything that's you know got any science behind it but they get thousands and thousands of views thinking how the hell do you get all those views and it's not in hating it's just thinking how the hell do you get all those views hmm. you know you know the cats i'm talking about yeah i do with the you clickbait know. posts and stuff Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are some cats that I've actually met that say, man, I don't believe the shit I'm saying. I'm only saying it to get views. And it worked. There's one guy in particular said, listen, half the stuff I was talking about, I just looked at the names. I just typed in a name that was getting lots of views. And then I just talk a whole load of shit about them. And then I'd get loads of views for it. Wow. <laughs> hey, man, let's end the show, man. I got a couple of things I got to ask you. Yeah, I've got to end it too. Yeah, so, Bo, thank you so much. No problem, man. I got, I got a few things I got to ask you, though. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, then. No, take us off air. Huh? Oh, yeah. Take okay. us off air. Oh, off air. Okay, no problems. Yeah, off air. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for listening to the show once again. And when I speak, please read between the lines and understand I'm not speaking on the behalf of just myself. I'm speaking on the behalf of other people across the YouTube community that are passionate about the work that they do. And some of them have been disheartened by the lack of appreciation and the lack of respect that they've been given uh, by viewers whose only agenda is to cause division. Only uh, objective is to see the work that you do no longer continue so that they can continue to allow their brand and their form of media to continue. I'm not having it on this channel. So if you're one of those people listening that have been blocked, um, understand it's no personal vendetta against you it's just that with this brand we are not uh, we're not tolerating for any form of abuse so that's just brand bwtm thank you all so much for listening once again we appreciate you those who are subscribed and those who understand where we're getting from and those who don't understand i'm sure you'll go to another channel and you'll abuse another channel and then you'll get blocked on that channel as well you know or well, some channels just like the abuse on the channel because it's good for their ratings so that's it Bo, thank you once again for Bo Blam from truth and facts about boxing check his channel Always, out. Man. subscribe to his channel make sure you watch Bo his work is phenomenal talks balanced views even though I messed up some fighters names but that's okay that's all part of the 
um, make sure you check out Bo's work. Why should you listen to Bo Bland? Because you're going to listen to some truth about boxing and you're going to hear some very, very, very clear views, honest views and honest opinions. So, yeah, I'm supporting my brother, but I'm supporting you because it's good work. Um, and, right. you, and you do a lot better to listen to him than listen to uh, the likes of some media outlets that have just got agendas. There's no agendas with Mr. Bland. It's just as it is the truth about boxing and with some facts whipped in as well. So again, Bob Bland, thank you so much for being on the show. Don't forget as always to, well, if you want to subscribe, if you don't want to, don't subscribe and, you know, like it, hit the dislike button. If you're going to hit the dislike button, continue to hit the dislike button and make a difference. Um, we still are monetizing your view and we appreciate it. Thanks again. We're out of here. Have a good time. Peace.